stuff. People shit on you for personal things? Like, yes. Are you oh are you God. are you being sarcastic right no, now? I'm being because serious. Welcome to the Kevin Clancy show. I've been in this game over a decade and I knew I needed a place where I could run wild on my own solo podcast, where I tell personal stories, I deep dive into conspiracy theories, we rip through the current events of the day, and we do sit-down conversations with the most interesting people on the internet. Make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss an episode. What's up, you mutts? It's another episode of the Kevin Clancy show, Spite Tour Phase 3. Season premiere, episode one of the third phase of the Spike Tour because I've been getting my own guests, I do them in chunks. So I'll, I'll bring in like 10 guests in a row and that's a whole phase. Uh, bang them all out, schedule them all out. We're on to phase three now until somebody will book me guests for my show here, 15 years in at Barstool Sports, but it doesn't matter because we're bringing in the cream of the crop. Last episode, funniest guy in the world, Chris Stefano. This episode, funniest girl in the world, Taylor Tomlinson. The most successful chick on tour right now, Taylor Tomlinson, who has success on the comedy scene that you dream of when you're like 50, and she's got it at the age of 27 after. And you know what? You know what's fucked up? People, I feel like people discredit a lot of, uh, in, in any field, in any industry, but certainly in the comedy world, if you get big quickly, it's like somehow... Uh, you haven't paid your dues, or it's not real. Like, what? How fucking stupid is that? Think about it. I always compare comics to athletes, right? And when there's, like, the next phenom coming up, it doesn't matter if he's 18 years old. Draft him out of high school. Fucking, he's the best quarterback in the, in the league. We're just waiting to draft him because he's the best, and it doesn't matter that he hasn't been, you know, trudging along, paying his dues for, you know, fuck that. The best is the best. No matter how old they are, it does not matter. So the fact that, you know, Taylor Tomlinson became a phenom in her 20s, I don't know, fucking, you guys took 30 years, I took 10. Get the fuck out of here. So Taylor Tomlinson, the perfect guest to kick off phase three of the Spite Tour. A girl who uh, was raised ultra conservative, super religious, who had to decide to break off and do things her own way. That, my friends, is Spite personified, the perfect guest. Also the perfect guest Right now, that, that perfect age, she's 27, I'm 36. I work with some people who are freshly out of college or dropped out of college, early 20s. And uh, I want to talk today about the music, the music world and what constitutes a throwback. Because there's a new radio station in New York, 94.7 The Block. And it's all throwbacks from the world of rap and R&B, which is like right up my alley. Fucking perfect. It's like exactly what I've been looking for since I was like a, a young kid. We had two stations in New York that played rap. Now I've got a throwback station. And I was tweeted about the music that they've been playing. And I have to ask the question, what constitutes a throwback? So we'll talk about it. It's brought to you by 3 Chi. The question was posed to me on Twitter. Uh, as a matter of fact, no, this all began because of a, a, a uh, new radio station here in New York, which is a big moment in the radio world. When I was growing up in New York City, we had Hot 97, which if you're not even from New York, you know Hot 97. It was in all the rap songs from Puffy and Biggie, Hot 97, every day that's my word. Like, Hot 97 was a staple in the hip-hop culture. They were New York's number one for hip hop and R&B. Growing up as a white kid who was pretending to be black, Hot 97 was the gold standard. And there was also 107.5, which was WBLS, the black listening station. And I remember being a white kid, trying to listen to some R&B when Hot 97 had commercials on, I'd switch over to 107.5 and I'd be like, this is fucking weird. I don't think I should be listening to this. That was like cultural appropriation before there was cultural appropriation, okay? Um, and, um, and then all of a sudden Power 105 came along and they played 5,000 straight songs with no commercials. They played Fat Joe, What's Love, Fat Joe and Ashanti, like 60, 100 million times in a row. It's all they had that they had like the license to play or whatever. And all of a sudden there was two powerful hip hop stations. And that was great for music. Great growing up. I had two stations to hear music, new music. I had Hot Night, I had Funk Flex and Angie Martinez, then uh, Power 105 at the Breakfast Club with Charlemagne. It was amazing. And then I get older though. And A, we're not listening to the radio anymore. We're plugging in, we're listening to podcasts, we're listening to Spotify. But B, if I was listening to the radio, I didn't know any of these fucking songs, man. One of the worst feelings 
There's three times when you know, there's three signs of getting old. One, you don't know new music. Two, you don't know any of the slang. And three, you don't know how to use any of the apps, any of the new apps, social media apps. And the music one cut to my soul, dude. I, growing up, I was always the music guy. If we were at a party, you're listening to my phone, my iPod. We're going to the beach, make sure Kevin has the iPod. I had playlists, I had new music, I had illegal music, I had the remixes, the remakes, the blends, all of that. If I could get a hold of my original iPod. Remember the OG iPod that had the circle wheel but also had the four buttons? It was like the rewind, fast forward, pause and stop were the buttons, that iPod was the best thing that's ever happened to me. I, I could have like 2,500 songs back when, I had a Motorola Sliver, not the Razor, a Sliver that could hold 100 songs. And that was like the dopest shit in the world. Had, it came with headphones with this weird plug-in, it wasn't like a USB, and I had 100 songs on there, and it was like the coolest shit that ever happened. And I got myself the iPod, and the music that I had on there, if I could recover that, I seriously would pay, I would pay thousands of dollars to get that iPod and recover all that music. If you, if you, if you ever have like an old laptop from your college days, or like in, in, in my era, the Napster days, oh my God, Napster was, Napster was like the sexiest thing that's ever happened to me, literally and figuratively. We were downloading porn on like LimeWire and Kazaa. You had the music on Napster. What's the first song you ever downloaded on that? Did you guys have? Did you guys download music illegally? Not you two. Did you? Uh, LimeWire. I didn't have it on my computer. I would, I would use it on friends. I think Inside Out by Eve Six was the first one. Inside I, I Out by Eve Six. Is that uh, put my heart in a blender? Yep. Yep. Took me two years to figure out that song because the lyrics make no fucking sense and the lyric <laughs> websites weren't well developed yet. Yep. So. I'll tell you finally what. Finally got it. The first thing I ever did on the internet. It's funny you say that. I'm so old, the first time I went on the internet was something called Prodigy, which most of you motherfuckers don't even know what that means. That was like the first form of the internet. The first thing I ever did on like the World Wide Web on like Internet Explorer was look up the lyrics to The Crossroads. Shout out to Bone Thugs and Harmony, who ties it nicely to this, DM'd me. I got a DM from Bone Thugs and Harmony. It was a highlight of my life. Uh, I'm all over the place here because... There was a new radio station unveiled this weekend in New York called 94.7 The Block. And they're playing throwback jams of hip-hop music. Which is a bitter pill to swallow for your boy. Because you can call it a hip-hop throwback. We can dress it up however you want. I am now listening to an oldie station. And that makes me want to jump off a bridge. The fact that I am officially into the oldies era. Like, when I was growing up, it was 106.7, Light FM. Where, you know, that was like dentist office music and grocery store music. Celine Dion, that kind of shit. That was like your oldies, right? Now, I'm old enough and been around long enough that hip-hop has become an old person. It's been, it's been around, it's been a genre long enough that you can have oldies rap. That's a problem. I, I've talked about this before when it comes to uh, old Kanye versus new Kanye and Jay-Z versus Young Thug. A, a couple of these rap debates we had over the past couple of years. What people don't realize is when we were growing up, rap was still so new that rap was always cool. There had never been any lame rap music because the genre was so new that it had always been cutting edge. Your grandfather had never listened to rap. Your parents never listened to rap. We were the first generation to like come up on it. Maybe like one generation before me in the 80s. But we were the first people to listen to it and so it was always cool. Now, Jay-Z has been around long enough that his catalog is old enough that there are young kids being like, man, fuck that. In My Lifetime Volume 1, like who gives a fuck about that album? That is a bitter pill to swallow for us. Where it's like, what do you mean Jay-Z's lame? What do you mean you like the new Kanye? What do you mean you think that Young Thug has more hits than Jay? You know, you know these things just, they, they don't compute in our brains. You have to, if you're a young person, you gotta cut us some slack. 
cut us old people some slack. It's like we, we quite literally cannot wrap our brains around it. But then 94.7, the block comes along. And I haven't listened to the radio in forever. Like I said, it's always podcast or Spotify. And hit after hit after hit keep coming. Everything from like Bone Thugs. They were playing uh, Thuggish Ruggish, Thuggish Ruggish Bone, which is like a deep cut for Bone Thugs fans. We're not doing The Crossroads, which by the way is the remix. People don't realize that. The two greatest remixes ever, Ignition and The Crossroads. The original song, Crossroads, compared to the Crossroads East 99 Eternal remix, I mean, night and fucking day. It's, it's crazy that there was ever even the first one. It should just be the second one. Uh, TLC, they were playing Red Light Special. They're, but then they'll, then they'll drop something like Empire State of Mind. They, like they, All over the map, rap from the last like 10 years ago to like 30 years ago. And it was, there's something about when, uh, like I could just pop on Spotify and look up a playlist or remember a song and go put it on and listen to all this music. The same way that you can always go on demand and put on a movie or you know pop in a DVD player. Nobody even really does that anymore. But there's something about when you stumble upon a movie you like. When, I was, when you're at home and you're just flipping through the TV, again, that's something that's, I can't believe I, I'm, uh, this is happening, but like the idea of just being on, on your television like, flipping through with, with the remote, it just doesn't really happen anymore. But when you were, if you're young enough, old enough to do this, when you would stumble upon Braveheart, you'd be like, fuck yes. My, my, my next four hours are taken care of because Braveheart with commercial interruptions is like four and a half hours. Or uh, the classic when you get Shawshanked and you got to watch Andy Dufresne get free. Or when you find a, a saving Silverman, when you're hungover on a Sunday morning and you can barely get your eyes open. And you're like, I just need something to distract me from this hangover. And you put on like TBS and you hear, I'm coming to you. And you're like, yes, Saving Silverman's on. I had no idea this was coming. I didn't, I had no plans to watch Saving Silverman, but now it's here and it fell into my lap like a gift from the heavens above. That, that feeling, it's the same thing as putting on your winter jacket and finding 20 bucks in the pocket. I know I've got 20 bucks. It's not that I'm broke. It's that I found this money. The same way that I found Saving Silverman that was given to me. The same way that I pop on the radio and I hear thuggish, ruggish bone. Never, for the rest of my life, there was never going to be a moment where I, where I got in the car and I put that song on by myself. There's a chance I never heard that song ever again. As much as I liked it, it was not in my brain. It was never there to be like, put that song on. But 94.7 The Block brings it into my life. There's something about the surprise element where you don't think about it, you don't know what's coming, and whether your favorite movie or your favorite song comes on, it's, it's, it, it's different. And so I've been loving 94.7 The Block. Me and Clem, everybody my age, cannot get enough of it. And then they played Yeah by Usher and Lil Jon. And I was, I, somebody tweeted me and said, this is the throwback station and they're playing Yeah. This doesn't sit right with me. This is not a throwback, which is patently wrong, by the way. I was listening to Yeah in the summer of 03. It officially came out in 2004. But like I said, back in the day when you could get music early and you could download it or you had a, like a, I had a friend who like DJed at bars who like got advanced music. So we were listening to that the summer of my senior year of high school. I remember being in the bar on North Avenue, underage drinking in New Rochelle, New York, North Ave, the underage drinking capital of the world. And that song came on, and I was like, what is this? That smash came out in 03, 04. That is like 18 years ago. That's like a whole, a whole ass person could have been born and become a, a, an adult in the time that that song has been out. That's a throwback, bro. So there's no debating that a song that that's old is a throwback. But what constitutes a throwback? It's a, it's an interesting question. It's a, it's a tangible question as much as it's a philosophical question. Where do you draw the line for throwback? Is it time? Is it, does it matter how big of a, like, like, yeah, is going to be remembered 
by everybody. So it's not that people are going to forget Yeah, because it was such a big song, but it's old enough to be a throwback. So I, my, my barometer, I decided, is if the kids today who are deciding what's big in pop culture, the people who are, you know, the people who have sway and the mavens of that generation who are deciding who's going to be big, who's selling records, who's popular, if they don't know a song, it's a throwback. That's got to be like the line. Now, like I said, yeah, they're going to know, yeah, because it's Usher and Lil John, it still gets played to this day. So they know that one. But other songs that came out that same year that were of uh, lesser uh, popularity, that'll be, that's a throwback. So how, like, where does that, where does that line, where's that line drawn? It depends on, on, on the youth of this, of this generation. I would say that anything that's like 10 years is for sure a throwback. If I, if, if, Nick, what would you, how many years for a throwback? It, can it be like, like something could be like five years old that might kind of constitute a throwback, no? Because like within five years, you can, like that's a whole college graduating class. Yeah, I think that's I, a whole. I think if it's been off the radio for five years. Like, right. If it's had its run. So that means it's probably been out for like eight years, seven years. Like I would consider like, hey there, Delilah might be a throwback time. Even though sure. it was played to fucking death when it was out. Because that was like 2007 or something. Hey there, Delilah. That shit went hard. Yeah. By the way, I, uh, I know, I roughly know Delilah. Oh, one of my buddies, like his brother dated her. I feel like maybe that's an urban legend then. Everybody knows somebody who fucked Delilah. Well, it was, since she was like, my buddy's brother was like big in cross country in college and like. Okay, cause that's yeah, how I know it, cross yeah, country. Yeah, she ran cross country. Yeah, she did. So maybe she fucked all these guys. I remember she did the fucking steeplechase at the Olympics and she had to be like, yeah, no, I met that guy fucking once Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wrote a fucking song about me. Creepo. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Delilah used to just fuck a bunch of cross-country guys. Shout out to the cross-country team, man. But it's a, it's a tough pill to swallow when you realize throwbacks is a gentle way of saying oldies. You're washed up. Throwback, it's a fucking, it's a term from like hip-hop and jerseys, throwback records. But it's, it's a tough guy, cool guy way of saying old. You're old. And when you've got a, your own station dedicated to it, bro, they, they played Red Light Special by TLC. And I'm in the car singing along with T-Boz, Chili. I mean, I was getting downright sexy with myself because I'm old. But I would say that the, what, what would you call a throwback? Like if, if, I, if, I, if I throw a song out that's, you know, like five years old, are you even going to know it? hundred percent. I mean, yeah. Mr. But Brightside you, you, is a throwback to me. Mr. That's, Brightside's a throwback? You think so? Yeah. No. I mean, that's definitely a throwback. That's like, that's 15 years old. I just feel like is it? 10 years yeah. old? Then it's a throwback. But that, see, the, the like problem, went off the, air, though. That, the problem is popularity. Yeah. There needs to almost be a, a lull, a down period where you don't hear it, you know? Because... Mr. Brightside has never stopped, but at the same time, if you know, if there's someone from uh, from this generation that doesn't know it, I wouldn't blame them. Like Brianna didn't know fucking what she didn't know. Dave Matthews was, you know, why would she? She was being born when he was playing Central Park. I, I know it, it's just it's. I think it's very hard, and I, I've said it before when it, it, whether it's music or or anything really for for my generation we were the internet generation we are used to knowing everything to being ahead of the curve we were always on the cutting edge because we were a part of like a when you're when you're a part of like a revolution we were we were smack in the middle of like the technology revolution you feel like you are always uh, in the know. And when you're old enough to then be like, no, you're not. Because there's a new generation who's younger and smarter and like, yeah, congratulations. You know how to use the fucking internet. That's not a big deal anymore. This, this, this shit that you think is cutting edge is not anymore. And that is 
That's one of the first things you got to like accept as you get old and every generation goes through it. But I think we're the first one to go through it in like the harshest way because we were a part of something so new and cool and revolutionary that it's like, we, I don't know, we probably would have thought we were going to be cool like forever. That was going to carry us the rest of our lives. Nope. You're old and you've got 94.7. I, if I, what, what was less time? Do you even like know how to listen to the radio? I feel like I'd like, if I were to tell, if I were to tell some kids like, Go to you know, 94.7. They'd be like, I don't know what that means. I mean, I grew up with the radio, but it stopped around, I would say, 12. Right. So, like, you know, like you're a kid when it ends. And so why, you know, why would you know that? So it, 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 that, that throwback is one that, you know, there are certain songs. Ask, ask the young people in your life what certain songs are and if they would call them throwbacks. And it will cut you deep learning what some people think like you know what's a great throwback you know what's a perfect one that was big but disappeared and has been gone long enough the thong song no do you clue. know the thong song no clue you don't know the thong song no clue I mean, you played it if i ask you right now for ten thousand dollars who sings the thong song you don't know no clue by cisco mm. Dumps like a truck, 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 dies like what? Never what? Heard, what? Heard it. <laughs> he doesn't know the thong song. I mean, what year is that? But then, so I, I said it's the perfect. Uh, it's the, it's, it, <laughs> I said it's the perfect throwback because it's been. It was big enough. It was huge. And then it disappeared for a long time. Your music, thong song radio, is like the best summer drinking music ever. We <laughs> fucking went hard to that. Two thousand, it came out. So you were what, like one? I, I was one. Yeah, yeah, so you wouldn't know it. So Cisco, <laughs> do you know who Drew Hill is? Nope. Okay, so that, they were like an R&B band. I don't really get uh, R&B group. And Cisco was the lead singer. He had like silver painted hair. Mm. And he went solo and he came out with the thong song. And I love the fact that I might be talking to some college kids right now or people who don't know this. And it, it's just a song about how awesome thongs are. Yeah, and I'm it was a... He's it, gonna go listen to I'm going to listen to it right now. Yeah. It was a revolution. And when the music video came out, I'm actually not going to lie, the music video was a little bit of a disappointment. You got to remember back then, 2000, getting porn is still tough. We don't have Instagram thoughts. So the thong song music video was going to be like, we are going to see music video girls shaking their asses in thongs, which now is like you wake up and you're fucking, your grandma's doing that shit, right? But back then, that was a big deal. And so the thong song, the song comes out and revolutionizes the world because every girl now, you could make the argument that the thong song is one of the most influential things that has ever happened because every girl started wearing a thong and that is one of the most important things that has happened to sex, to style, to entertainment, to everything. I, I remember, dude, I went to this club on, Nor uh, uh, not on North Avenue, but it was in New Rochelle. It was called Palladium. It was an 18 uh, teen club, right? It was like 18 to get in. And so there's no drinking and shit, but you know, people are sneaking in booze and you're dancing to techno music and shit. And I remember this girl, she uh, unbuttoned her pants and was like rolling her body and kind of like pulling her pants down a little bit. And I saw a thong and I was like, what the fuck is that dude? What is that girl wearing? I also remember seventh grade, Mrs. Pavlik's class, English class. I sat behind this smoke and she leans forward and I saw a full blown G string for the first time. And I was like, you got dental floss in your ass. What is happening? It was, it was like a, a, a this unknown, uh, unseen, scandalous thing. And then Cisco drops the thong song and it's like, that's if you're wearing granny panties now, you are you're a loser. You're a little girl. You're not a, you're not a hot chick. You suck. Every girl is wearing thongs now. That's one of the coolest things that's ever happened to the history of, of humanity, to men and women. Girls, you're wearing them for practicality. You don't want the lines. You got to wear it with certain dresses and clothes. Perfect. We get it. Guys, I don't care if you're 15 or 115. When you catch a glimpse of a chick's thong, it's much like. Finding Braveheart on TV or 
Stumbling upon your favorite song on 94.7 The Block. Yeah, I could find porn right now. I, I could see a naked girl like no problem. But when you see someone in the wild and you catch a glimpse of their thong at work, at school, wherever, it's like, oh shit, did you see that? You revert back to being like a pu prepubescent boy. So Cisco drops the thong song and changes the world, Mike. And the beauty of it, I saw an interview, uh, I, I saw an article about Cisco talking about the thong song, and it's, 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 it's amazing. He's just like, yeah, man, I made a song because I think thongs are really awesome. Let me see if I can find it. This was the article that I found uh, from Cisco talking about the thong song, and it's so perfect because, like I said, for every guy, and I'm sure for the girls, it was just like, it, I mean, it was just a song about thongs, right? So this article is about the inspiration for it. And it's like, it's the exact inspiration you'd think. This is Cisco's words. It was a cold winter's night. I don't remember if it was winter time or not, but I had a date with a young lady. And I must have done something right over the course of dinner because I got treated to a more intimate gathering, intimate gathering later on. We started to get all hot and heavy. She got undressed and lo and behold, I see something I had never seen before. This article of clothing. It was one of the most glorious things I'd ever seen in my life. I was like, what are you wearing? And she said, oh, this old thing, it's a thong. I think that was when my hair turned blonde. It was like in the Ten Commandments when Moses went to see the burning bush and came back down and his head was silver. I don't really remember the rest of that night because I was under a spell of said material. I was shell-shocked. The interviewer says, sounds like a transformative experience. Cisco says, she already had the cake, but she put the icing on it with a thong. That cemented it. I immediately went home to start writing the song and called my boys up. I saw something yesterday. Gather around, I'll tell you. Everybody leaned in and I told them, there's this new underwear that girls are wearing and it's called a thong. This is Cisco talking. It was like fellowship of the ring. Everybody was like, we gotta go out and hunt for, for one of these thongs. They literally left in that moment. A few days later, my cousin Kid burst through the door. I thought there was a fire or someone got hit by a car and he was like, I was with a girl last night and guess what she gave me? And I quote that, thong, the thong, 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 and that's where the song came from. That's where it all came from. Cisco and his cousin just saying, that thong, the thong, thong, thong. Uh, he gave him a big percentage of the royalties. And, uh, and then he goes on to say, the funniest part of that fucking song, it's the same verse three times in a row. He doesn't, he doesn't sing anything other than like the one set of lyrics. And nobody even noticed. He said, we made such a banger that nobody noticed that I said the same words three times. And it's the same thing ever. Ooh, that dress so scandalous, so devilish. You like to dance to the hip hop spots, connect the dots, she like to pop, living la vida loca. She had yeah, dumps like a drug, drug. He just does that three straight times and nobody cared because everybody was all under the spell of the thong. And so in my mind, there's a few things in this world that have definitive moments on the timeline before and after. The death of Jesus Christ, the death and birth of Jesus Christ, it's a big one, right? Before Christ, after Christ, huge one. Uh, I also think the Wild Things threesome. There's a huge moment in a man's life before you've seen the Wild Things threesome, after you see the Wild Things threesome. The, the creation of the thong song, one of the most influential moments of modern history, write it down. Because every guy who sees it, the first time they see it, now it's like, you know, I can't even, I can't even imagine. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's not a big deal. It's just standard. It's par for the course. You're fucking, you know, granny panties these days? Think about it. We'll be the first generation of grandmas walking around wearing thongs. You're going to have like a, right, Nick? Think about it. You're going to have like a 90-year-old grandma just being like, I wear thongs because I just fucking wore them my whole life. Your grandma, what? Yeah, no, that's in my head. Think about it. <laughs> think about this. Ready? Ready? Your... <coughs> Maybe not yet. So maybe like when I'm, when I'm dying, when, when, if you're like 30 something, right? So a young kid now, you will bury your dead grandma in a thong. Your dead grandma will be laying in the casket, all dressed nice, in a nice dress with her fucking hair done and her pearls on, cause that's what we do to dead bodies. And underneath it will be a thong because it became that fucking common because of one man. Because of one silver-haired man, Cisco, changed the world as we know it for the better. Now that is a throwback song. 
That need, the world needs. That's an oldies. That's a, that's an oldie. That's a throwback. That's what these young kids need to hear these days. That dong, the dong, dong, dong. Shout out to Cisco, who it's. I mean, it's got a Beatles sample. It's got the Eleanor Rigby sample. The fact that Cisco took Eleanor Rigby and turned it into the thong song. I don't care that he wrote like ten total lyrics and flipped it three times. That's a musical masterpiece. That is a a piece, an iconic piece of pop culture history. Okay. So what I want from everybody here, if you were old enough to live through the cultural revolution that was the thong song, I want you to tweet at me or get at me on Instagram, DMs or stories. Where were you when the thong song dropped? What was your experience with the thong song? Because it ranges, man, from the clubs to like high school dances to the bar to your, you know, first girlfriends in high school, all that. What what was your experience with Cisco's The Thong Song? Where were you? Like, who were you with? Where, what what house party were you at? What smells and sounds? Shout out to Joakim Noah. Like, remember where you were on 9/11? Remember where you were when Derek Rose tore his ACL? Remember where you were when you first heard? The thong song. Fuck. I can't believe these kids don't know the thong song. Children. Children, Nick. <sighs> also, real quick before we get into this interview. Uh, there was a time back in the day, probably pre-thong song, where everybody thought they had to go to the movies with someone else. You had to at least go on a date or bring a friend, or go with a crew of people. And it was almost a thing. I remember even when I first started Barstool, writing some like hacky jokes in a blog, being like, oh, that guy goes to the movies by himself. He's such a loser. And in deep down, I always kind of thought, who cares? Like going to a movie alone sounds great. And we finally as a culture pushed past that. The reason why going to the movies was a cliche like date is because you don't have to talk. You don't have to converse. That's the whole point. You can go together, spend a couple hours together, but you just sit there and watch the movie. So why did, do, did, was there any point in time where people worried about going to movies alone? And the first time you do it, it's the, it's, you'll never go back. Once you see a, a movie solo, you realize it is the superior way to take in a movie. Because A, you don't have to worry about what you're going to see, when you're going to see it, coordinating times and schedules and preferences. You go when you want to go. You don't have to worry about waiting on the lines while they get their food and you don't want it and you want the popcorn and they want this. You get all your shit. You sit where you want to sit. You only take up one seat. You watch it. You don't have to worry about if the other person liked it. You're laughing. They're not. Whatever. And then when you walk out, you inevitably have that talk, that conversation. You're walking out together and someone goes, so what'd you think? You're either the person who says, so what'd you think? Or you're the other person who goes, I really liked it. Or ah, I really didn't like it. And it's the most awkward and unavoidable conversation in the world. Unless you just go by yourself. And the world realized that. And solo movies became the thing. Table for one, please. Everybody can do it now. And everybody says, oh, I love it. I'll never go, I'll never go back. I'll never go back to see it with people again. I love this. That was the first step in society. It's time that we take the sep second step as society and we start going to comedy shows solo. Again, the better way to see it. You don't have to worry about if the person likes the comedy. You don't have to worry about if you have the same sense of humor. You go on a date right now, you go see a comic who's edgy and controversial. They're making jokes about abortion or politics or sex, misogyny, whatever. You're laughing, your date's not awkward. You bring a friend, oh my God, I love this guy. He's the funniest. They don't laugh, you feel like an asshole. You don't understand why they're not laughing. You're mad at them for not laughing. You're doing one of those like, but did you hear him? Did you get it? Did you get the joke? This shit's funny. No, forget about all that. Solo comedy is perfectly fine. And as a matter of fact, it's the superior way to go see it. So I am extending an offer to anybody who comes to see KFC Radio live on November 12th. You come solo, I'll buy your drink. Your first drink's on me, your drink minimum, I got you. Come, buy solo ticket, sit by yourself in our theater. You are our guest, you're not going alone. You're coming with me and John. You're, you're going, you're, you're third wheeling it with us two. And we'll talk to you, you can be part of the show. Anybody who comes solo, get at me ahead of time, send me a DM, 
raise your hand at the crowd in the crowd. Solo comedy. It, it, it is it is so it, it's going to blow your mind how much how think about it. You sit on the couch and you watch a special. You watch comedy alone at home on the TV. You watch everything else alone. You can go alone. It's phenomenal. You're going to love it. You'll be part of our show. We welcome you in. So uh, go to LiveNation.com or head over to KFC Radio on any of the social and you can get tickets to our show at the New York City Comedy Festival. It's the early show on Friday night, so come through at 6.30. Happy hour with us. Have some drinks. Kick off your night and kick off your weekend. And you don't have to worry about bringing a date or bringing a friend. Uh, It's going to be a good time. So uh, with all that being said, it's now time to get into a Spike Tour interview. All right. Let's get into it with Taylor Tomlinson. Like I said, one of the best comedians, period, in the game, male or female, young or old, doesn't matter because the comedy is fucking funny. And that's what Taylor does. So let's get into it. Taylor Tomlinson on the Kevin Clancy Show. It's brought to you by Thursday Boots. Thursday Boots has a uh, subsidiary called Nothing New, and that's who we collaborated with for our sneaker drops, the Sad Boy Season 1s and the Moon Man 1s. I'm rocking them right here right now with the... uh, I've, I've grown accustomed to the no laces. My pair, I made a, uh, a hybrid pair of shoes that's both a slip-on and a lace-up, however you want to rock it, inspired by Converse with the rubber toe cap. I got the black denim frayed, and you can rock it, like I said, either slip-on or lace-up. It's a staple for any, any sneakerhead that needs that, that low-top classic look in their closet. You can get the Moon Man ones from Nothing New. You can also get the boots from Thursday Boots, whether you're looking for a brunch boot or a Chelsea boot, or you're looking for something like a, uh, a military boot that's got like quality materials to get the job done. Whatever you're looking for, Thursday Boots has you covered. So the boots or the sneakers from Nothing New, either way, uh, quality stuff that you're gonna like. It's on trend, uh, quality materials, and all at an affordable price. So go to thursdayboots.com to get your boots. Go to the Barstool store or nothingnew.com to get your Moon Man ones. And uh, be on the lookout for that Sad Boy season uh, restock. So let's get into it now. It's Taylor Tomlinson on the Kevin Clancy Show. Let's talk to her. All right, let's do it. All right. Taylor Tomlinson in the building. You see me fix my posture for that? I was like, ooh, I, it's not slouch. We're I starting. Kinda, I always slip down, and I've kind of got like the skinny fat thing going on, so I'm constantly... Ter- I have a terrible case of body dysmorphia. Do you? Yes. We, well, we, I think when you're on camera all the time, you have to, right? Yeah, I, I, the people who are not, who don't have it, I'm like, you're either, you know, a model or you have the most mental like confidence I've ever seen in my life. Models have body dysmorphia. Well, that's though, yeah, right. right? They, yeah, they're probably the worst, which is the funniest thing of all. It's like the most beautiful people who are probably like, because it's their career, they're probably yeah. stressing out more than anything. And it's like you're, you know. Yeah, but if Amazing. it's your job to have people like putting clothes on you, going like mm, you're not really mm-hmm. doing that. Oh, you're not uh, the way perfectly in eleven out of ten. So get it off. Yeah, that seems life. like a nightmare to me. Because at least with like being funny, you're like, well, I'm funny. I'm not. So anytime someone's like, you're ugly, you're like, well, I'm not I'm supposed to be hot. Right. So I'm a comedian. I'm supposed to be funny. But if I'm hot, it was by accident. I, <laughs> I'm not even trying. <laughs> right. But I would also say that I think. Uh, next to looks, probably, and maybe even more so, people judging your humor is probably the n- next most uh, hurtful thing. Oh you yeah! Know, if somebody says you're not funny or like you don't have, you can't have a conversation, you don't have a personality. It's like, oh my god! And then especially when you're trying to be funny, it's like, yeah, I think you can also have career dysmorphia. For sure. I, is like, that like imposter syndrome type shit? Really? I think it's imposter yeah. syndrome. Yeah. I mean, my this is funny. My therapist yesterday. She goes, I'm looking, while we're on the call, I do it over Zoom, and she goes, I'm looking at your website. She goes, it looks like you have a lot of sold out (laughs) shows. And I was like, oh yeah, we added some. And she goes, so it it seems like it's going well. (laughs) And I was like, no, I know, and that's why I'm upset, because I'm still sad, and I don't know what to do, because I kind of thought that once it was going well, I'd be better. And she's like, okay, but can you acknowledge that it's going well? I was like, I mean, I know that. I just don't feel it. That's a great distinction, though, because I, I when we when we last talked, I was kind of saying the same thing. Where I was like, "Are you happy? Because like you're killing it, you know." And yeah. because from a point of view of someone like I would love to be selling out theaters over and over and over again. So like, how would you not be happy? But you know, different things make people. I would love to be getting recognized on the street from Snapchat, but <laughs> we can't have everything, okay? Trust me, yours. <laughs> Take yours, okay? <laughs> There's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more tangible uh, success than when people, especially doing one minute man videos on Instagram now. 
I just, people know me as that now, which I didn't really think through. So it's just like, yo, Minute Man. I'm like, <laughs> well, that was the joke. So I kind of asked for it. But boy, I didn't right. think I was going to be called that in the streets. But, but um, you're, like a, you're like a consistent, comforting presence for people online. Like when you put out something, you do it every day? Almost, yeah. Or like every weekday? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like incredible. I don't know how anybody does that. It's so much pressure. Like... I'm enjoying not doing a podcast right now because it was just, I did one for th three years, but I did it with two of my best friends. So, you're just so it wasn't even that much pressure. Yeah. But it was just a lot to be like, you gotta put something out every single week. Yeah, but see, that's what's funny to me, because I've done that for so long, I can't imagine putting together like an hour long, perfected, you know, routine. It's like, right. for like one minute man to me is like, I just, I'd film it on my phone. I just kind of like let it rip. I do a couple takes and I'm good to go. Right. So it's just like kind of, I guess, what you're used to. But uh, I, I, I do think, like, you do recognize that most people in the world would think that stand up comedy is like the most difficult thing to do. As you know, we're not digging ditches here, but you know, it's not like physical, it's not manual labor. But as far as, you know, people don't like public speaking, they don't want to perform, it's hard to be funny. You got to be likable while also being cool. I mean, it's not easy, and you seem to, like, nail it. <laughs> oh, thank you. I don't feel that way. I mean, I especially... How? How do you not feel that way? You know what? It's like, I have this big fear now. Every, every, time, every time something happens in my career that gets me to, like, a new, like, good level, I just find new things to be panicked about. And my mm. new thing is that <laughs> I'm afraid now that when I'm in town doing shorter sets, working on newer stuff, people are going to watch me and go, That's you? Mm. Like, you're doing it? Like, you're touring theater? Like, so now I have you're this... Crazy. I I think people do that, though. I think <laughs> people they? really... I, I mean... Well, see, I respect that because a lot, like, I... In, in our fields, as different as they are, when you do something, like, fun for a living, people don't get that it's stressful or or scary or hard or whatever. They're just like, dude, you know, you don't even have a real job. So, you know, I say you're crazy, but it's like if you tell me that that happens and you believe it, then I'm like, boom, I take it back because I fully believe it. Because when I say stuff and people don't believe me about it, I'm like, I wish you could just like walk in for one day. You would understand how it's different, you know? I know, because I'm sure you feel that way with just like people discovering your videos. You probably have that sometimes. I don't want to put things in your head in case this isn't oh, fuck. Uh, an insecurity oh, you have. Oh, fuck. But don't worry, I've got yeah. them all. Let's plant some seeds. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if you're ever, you ever get like a negative comment on a video and they're like, this wasn't good. And you're like, well, there are a lot of them. Yeah, Like, yeah. is this the only one you watched? Right. Because if you watched all of them, yeah, there's going to be You find some. Yeah, you're going to see maybe one or two that you're like, well, this wasn't great. Well, you know what I've noticed? It's so annoying because I get a lot of hate. I have a lot of haters. I have people hate on me for personal stuff. People hate on me because I, I am very opinionated and I... I for personal stuff yeah. they hate on you? Yes, yes, yes. Family stuff, marriage what? that didn't work. Yeah, bad stuff. People shit on you for personal things? Like... Yes. Are you oh are you God. are you being sarcastic right no, now? No, I'm being because, serious. Yeah, that you no. put out funny videos for people that are topical, and they're like, no. "You got divorced." Yeah, like, pretty really? much. Like the top comment is always like, "Yeah, oh you're, God. you're yeah. It's, that's it's, horrible." But I've like just kind of come to like that's almost like white noise now. I'm right. like so. But what I've noticed is the people, I'll get I'll like turn the tides yeah. when it's just I, they agree with me, right? Because I'm always doing at the top. And I'm always doing like an issue. And I remember there was one week where, like, I did three in a row that was like, there's no 50-50 here. It's like, this person's a bad guy, this person was a good guy, and this was really funny. And yeah. they were like, oh, he, he's, he's getting better. I'm starting <laughs> to like him. I'm like, no, you just fucking agree with me right now. And tomorrow, you're going to disagree with me and tell me I'm bad at my job. Right. And I think that's so much of the internet and feedback and comments and DMs where it's just like, especially now, if it's anything even remotely political or social or whatever, it's like, if I agree with you, you're good. If I disagree with you, you're bad. Like, that's not how it fucking works. Right. Or they're like, you just lost a fan. Didn't oh, realize you favorite. were this or that. And that's you're like, my favorite. Okay, well, if you were paying attention, yeah. you'd realize I was that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, right. I can't believe this was the video that you're like, what? Right. I've been this Liberal. the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's right. just. Is that the surprise? Yeah. yeah. Did you think yeah. That, that Taylor was out there like MAGA toting? Like, Truly. Yeah. I just, yeah, people were like, you tricked me. It's so stupid. Yeah, I, I think like, like, I mean, again, we're on camera all the time, and it's our fault, mm -hmm. but of course you're going to have this, like, warped 
sense of identity. I mean, I think normal people feel that with social media. Oh. And it's not even their job. They have uh, 200 followers and they're like. That I don't get. If you if you didn't have this job, would you be on social media, do you think? I, You know what? I was just thinking about that and I, I think that I wouldn't. But then I'm like, you probably would. I think it's gotten to the point where you're almost weird. If you meet someone and it's like, oh, what's your Insta? And they're like, I don't have one. It's kind of like. What are you like on the run? Are you like are you like living a double life? Are you I hiding? Think that's so hot. But yeah, yeah do you? If, oh if a guy God. didn't have it, you'd be if like, what's up? If a guy didn't have Instagram, mm -hmm. I'd be like, are you? Where's your wife? Like, that's yeah, but the that's what I mean. It, it's like, it's either like, wow, you are, um, you have like values from like a a a, a, a past time, and you're a yes. good guy, or like you're a serial killer and you're on the run and you can't have your picture out there. Or just don't care like yeah. I mean I had a friend who was in like a sorority in college and like went to law school and was like I don't want to have to think about posting things mm -hmm. ever she's like why am I she's like I never post a lot of people never post a lot yeah. of people have social media just to creep and watch just to and look at look. other people's yeah. and then they post like once a month yeah. and you're like oh yeah that person I think I would have Twitter became so awful but like yeah. we, when we started we put all our eggs in the Twitter basket the worst idea ever um, but when you're like trying to be funny, I think Twitter works like little quips and just like one line jokes. Yeah. So I liked that, like funny tweets and funny like trends. I think is good. But then it became so 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 toxic. But I don't think I would have Instagram if I if I didn't do this. I definitely wouldn't have Twitter if I, I know, didn't. I know that's this. what I mean. It's like I liked it, but now it's become. So I don't I don't think I could deal with that. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> post on TikTok. I would have TikTok, but mm. I wouldn't post on it. Yeah. Instagram, I would probably post on. Let's be honest, but yeah. then I, it would. It, but that's just because that's what you did. Like, yeah. but yeah. I didn't get Instagram until like college, and I didn't post a ton on it. Because if you're not getting, if you're getting like fifty likes, like that's who even did that get. even happen? But do you think that like, <laughs> are you even alive if you can't get a hundred <laughs> likes on a photo? But do you think that you're jaded by the fact that like you know you probably get tens of thousands of likes on shit? Yeah, I mean right? I'm the so, worst. Like at, yeah. yeah, are yeah. you do you like you watch it all like? Oh, if I get like ten thousand likes on a post now, I'm like, well, that bombed. Like <laughs> I know what the averages are, wow. and I'm like, well, okay, nobody likes a graphic, but oh, this is my job. Man. Like, oh, it's so gross. It's it such is. it's such a job. But that's the it's a job. That's yeah. the game. Like that's why you are you know on top of just being talented. Like you could be talented. And not do that stuff, and you're not going to get as far as you should. Yeah, like that's the job part, really. I would imagine, you know, like I, I would hope you still you get like joy out of writing jokes and performing, or is that part become a job? Everything becomes a job. Everything becomes a job. I'm. I think that when I get out of my own way, I do. I think all this other stuff is so distracting, and it's all necessary, and it's all a privilege to be worried about. Yeah, but it really does like it starts to get to a point where you're like, oh, I have no time to work on. My act, which is the whole thing I'm That's doing all this for, yeah. is to get people to come out and watch jokes I wrote. And I, I just, yeah, I've, I've had trouble with it because I usually write on the road in clubs. And I was doing a lot of that. And now that we're doing the theater tours, I'm like, okay, this hour's pretty much locked in. We're shifting things around and adding here and there. But honestly, I need to cut it down. So now mm. I'm like cutting jokes that I'm going to save for the next one. And it's just in like polishing mode, but being in polishing mode, it's hard to be, for me, it's hard to be in polishing mode and be in writing mode at the exact same time. So I have to almost go like, okay, when you're in town, do the jokes that you're not going to do in the special, special right? and work on newer stuff. So that's like ready for you. But then when you're in town, you're around all of your peers who only see you posting like, Everything's going great, mm -hmm. and so they they want to see that. They, yeah, they, they see you have it. a mediocre set. Yeah, I I would assume they're like, all right, someone's but, slipping. But they're not, right? Like, I don't know. Think, I'm I mean, not sure. Like I, I've just I'm so much better. I guess you know it's like do as I say, not as I do, or like I can give you advice. I got to take my own advice, whatever like euphemism you want to use. But when I see someone acting basically like I act, I'm like, you're silly. Right. Like you're. Great. Yeah. You're funny. You're pretty. You're likable. Everyone's enjoying it. You're making money. You're thriving. Why would you act like this? And then it's right. like, but you know, people would say the same thing. Exactly. About, uh, you know, it, it is. I think it is like the. Uh, it's just like the, like how cruel life can be, where right. it's like you can't. And it's you're right. It's all a privilege. It's all like 
first world problems. Yeah. But man, it's like it is real where it's like I I don't want to be like this. I want to just like enjoy it and recognize it. Yeah. But there's something going on that kind of like doesn't let me. And then you beat yourself up and you're like, I'm so ungrateful. Like, they should have gone to somebody who was going to just fully enjoy it yeah. and not be such a little bitch about it yeah. and be scared and worried. But then you're also scared that if you're not scared, then you're not going to work hard and you're not going to stay good. So you got to keep that fear because then you see people get complacent and then they just go like, I'm great now. And they stop working hard and you're like, this is exhausting. And I think at the end of the day, I have not been good about this lately, but I, I, I reached a point like a few years ago where I was like, you know what? We have to just take some time for ourselves and, like, not work every week mm -hmm. and, like, be more of a person. And then the pandemic hit, and then it was, like, everything got taken away. Nobody. And then, you're not a person at all. You're not a person just a creature. At all. Yeah. You're just a creature. And it, it made me kind of go back into, like, workaholic mode, mm -hmm. I think, because you're a workaholic when you're scared that shit's not going to happen for you or mm -hmm. things not going to work out or it's all going to go away. Yep. I have that so. fear all the time. Yeah. That's just going to disappear. I was, when we, we used to just blog before video, before podcasts, all that shit. And I was, that's like still to this day probably my best thing. That's the only thing I'm confident in. Where I was like, I know that I can write and be funny in like, you know, I can't write a book. I can write like paragraph form, you know? Yeah. But that I, I had confidence in. And then of course it's like, well, that's the only thing like, that's like not going to make money here. <laughs> so. Right. Um, but that was the only thing I was ever confident in. But even that I used to be like, well, what if the internet's just like not going to be funny today and there's just no material to write about and then then what? And it's like all totally irrational shit. Yeah. But can you just take days off? Can you just be like, I'm not going to do it today? Um, can I do that? Um, no. I don't think I can. Could you? Like, like the podcast, I mean, I, no, I don't know. Like what, I haven't. What's your contract? Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like if I... I, t I took a vacation. It was like a couple days off for the first time in, I mean, Nick, what was that, like five years? Like, I mean, it's, it's like, I guess I could be like, we're just going to skip this week and we'll push the ads to next week. But then it becomes, that's almost like more stressful. I find it more stressful to take time off because it's like we either have to yeah. do all of our work up front so that we're covered or we got to like, like make the following week crazy so next Monday is going to suck. And right. it's like, I don't even know if it's worth it. You know? That's fair. Yeah. I mean, but it my... probably is. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Like, you should definitely do it. <laughs> How was the time off? It was nice. It was yeah. good. It was like, I. Two know. days? Is that what you took? Yeah. Two days is like not even enough time to have off. Like, I, I was talking to someone about that who does not work in entertainment who's like, oh, if you go on vacation for like five days, it takes like two days for you to feel like you're on vacation. You're, yeah, to de decompress and relax. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're getting back on the plane. <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like by the time I'm decompressed, I'm like, well, now I'm worrying about getting back and what's waiting for me. So there's like a two-hour window where I'm relaxed. This was nice, so, a yeah. two-hour window, yeah. like, mm, late on the beach. This but was great. I, I don't know what level I would need to get to to, to be like, because I do fear, I know my, I, I, I've, I've watched it like myself as a consumer where it's like, if I've fallen off of one podcast and scooped up another one, and I kind of like forget about that other one, you know, I'm like, oh, now I listen to this every day instead. And so I'm like, well, what if that happens to me in massive amounts? And I don't think that's that irrational to think. Yeah, I think, I think this business people. moves fast. Yeah, I guess so. That's the thing. That <laughs> yeah, but, but if I were you, I think I would be like, I am good. That's so funny. My, God, is this the most annoying conversation? <laughs> my, my agent told me the other day that, uh, He's like, the, the amount of times that people will go see an artist live once are so much higher than like two or three times. He's like, that's mm. what's hard to sustain is getting people to come back. He's right. like, like, if I think about the bands I've seen, the number I've seen three times is very small. Right. And compared to the ones I've seen once. One time, yeah. And I was like, Okay, but, is that like, a but good you're thing doing or a great. bad thing. Yeah, I like, think he was just kind of explaining like how it worked. But he goes, but you're gonna keep. He's like, you're gonna get new people. That's what he was mm -hmm. saying. He was mm -hmm. like, people are gonna drop off. He's like, people aren't gonna come see you every time you're in town. People right. are gonna drop off. He's like, but then new people will come. Right, and that's just kind and of as how long it as you keep those levels you know, right at the right spot. Right, but they are like. I mean, he wasn't, like, reprimanding me or anything. He was like, everything you're doing is great. But he's like, yeah, you have to keep momentum going, just in, like, a general yeah. sense. Do you think there's a, a difference for you because you did it pretty quick? 
Like so a difference many, for me, how? Um, well, like some people, it's like you know, it took them thirty years to sell out a theater, right? And now, and so they feel like uh, I, I can't even imagine what they feel, but maybe. I put so much work into this and I've made it that now I'm ready and I'm gonna like sustain it forever. Whereas you were like, boom, right to the top. And it's like, was there ever a feeling of like, I'm not ready for this? Or did you always feel like it escalated? You know, okay, I'm doing 100 people, 300 people, 500, 1,000, 2,000, you know, and you were ready for it at every stop. I mean, there are so many people who blow up after like decades that you start to go, okay, anybody who gets to this level earlier than that like there's like a judgment on it of yes. like oh you got it too early yeah and i'm sure like do you feel that <sighs> yeah i feel that sometimes i i mean i i don't i don't know what to do about that though like not, i'm like i'm sorry what do you want me to not do it like that's the thing i'm, I'm like, gonna go I perform can't... for 10 people for another two decades for, yeah uh, you know i mean i I, I don't know, like, I work all the time, I go up all the time, like, I, I, I don't think I lucked into it, necess I don't think I lucked into it, but there is luck involved, and there is, you know, being the right moment in the industry and mm -hmm. all that bullshit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think anybody who doesn't have a degree of self-awareness when they are successful young needs to realize, like, being young helps you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean you're not good. Yeah. Well, what's funny is comedy is about like relatability. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you're doing really good material for like twenty to twenty six year old girls, right? That's and they and that resonates. Then that's when you're gonna succeed, right? You know, it's like it's yeah. not about. Of course, there's an experience level, but it's like I'm doing what works for my age group, and it just happens to be younger. You're killing it with, like, 50-year-olds, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah, everybody's audiences are, like, so completely different. Mm -hmm. That's what the Internet has made so possible is just everyone can find their own audience. But that's what people don't get either. It's like, because something's not for you doesn't mean it's bad. Yes. You know? It's like, I get it. When I watch that TikTok of just, like, somebody dancing, I don't think there's any value to that. Yeah. But I know that that like fourteen year old girl thinks it is the coolest thing in the world. So yeah. who fucking can, so just let that be, you know? Yeah. Why does it have to appeal to you or 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 it's bad? You know? Oh that's... yeah, it's. I mean, I I did a a thing where I was like hosting a a podcast, and it was like a a TikTok star meeting a fan, and we did a few of them, and man, those TikTok fans are like so invested and like crying yes. like they're just like for people that and like the tiktok stars are pretty nice too because mm -hmm. a lot of times they were just like kids like two minutes ago yeah, they, yeah. you know they're not like jaded and bitter by it yeah you know? they were just like well i was putting stuff online and somehow this is my job now yeah but like i i don't understand it's it. it's like the fucking beatles though it is I, I thought it was the total opposite when tiktok started blowing up and they told us we all have to do it I was like, I think that's like a lot of smoke and mirrors. I think they're inflating numbers. I don't think it's tangible. And then I saw like Charlie D'Amelio get mobbed like she was Britney Spears and like Michael Jackson type shit where it's like, I can't be yeah. on the street. And I was like, oh wow, it's to total opposite. It's the most tangible where people, which just it will never make sense to me, but that's where I'm like, okay, I'm old. I get it. I am the old man. These things don't make sense to me anymore. I'm just trying to be cool about it and not be a, like an old lame asshole about it. Yeah, I mean, there there are TikTokers that I see that I'm like, okay, you're like sharing. They're just vlogging. They're right. just like vlogging. They're just talking about their life with right? like, like cool like, edits mm -hmm. and music and stuff. And I'm like, I fully get this person meaning a lot to you, but when it's really just like dancing, just like and a, being like hot, a ten second, yeah, yeah, I'm like. What? And they all do the same they ones. All do the same thing. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, you just mean so much to me. And I'm like, How's but that? why though? Yeah. Like, what is yeah. it? And they're like, they're just so nice. And I'm like, yeah, of course they're nice. Yeah, it's like, what, what do you expect people to just get on their TikTok and be like, fuck you and fuck I you? I mean, I'm an awful person. You know what it is? It's like, it. I think it's like aspirational. Mm -hmm. I think TikTok is the way Instagram kind of used to be, and now is like. Instagram's kind of dropping off or whatever. So I'm told. <laughs> uh, the powers that be. The, the they powers say. that be. Yeah. But TikTok has that thing that like reality TV has where people are watching it going, oh man, I wish I looked like that. that I wish my me. life was like yeah. that. I wish I lived there. I wish, right. 
you know, that's how I feel when I watch people traveling on TikTok. I'm like, ooh, Greece, like mm -hmm. from the Holiday Inn in Wisconsin <laughs> I stayed in. Like it's, it's very easy to have that like escapist. Yeah. Well, I also like if I, if I was like a 15 year old brunette girl who looked exactly like the one who has 100 million followers and we're all doing the same dance moves, I think I'd be like, well, I, I, I could be next. Right. Or, or fuck this girl, why not me? Or whatever. Right, but it right, is, right, right. it does feel like maybe you're like the next one. But what is interesting, I think, like, you know, you learn that like Addison Ray has like a, her mom is like a stage mom and it almost was like an enterprise behind it, you know? I right. don't think it was as much, you know, just dumb luck or whatever. Right. Because there are people pulling the strings and knowing how to take it to the next level and all that. That's, yeah. I mean, I never, did you have any of that in your life? Like, I feel like having the up, bringing you had being, you know, everybody knows about very strictly religious and all that. Was there anybody like helping you and pushing you along? Or was it all to just be you? a comedian? Yeah. I mean, my my dad took me to a stand-up class that he wanted to take when I was in high school. And, but he, we took it at a church. We took it from a church comic. Like right. he was like, even like a couple years later, he's like, I didn't think this was gonna be like a job for mm. you. I just thought we were gonna go do this thing. Right, a little and, hobby. Yeah, a little hobby, whatever. Yeah. Like. I don't think he thought it was gonna go beyond that class. And then even when it did, it was like, well, you'll perform in churches. You'll be like a church comedian. Right. And God. so, yeah, I mean, I think at first they were like, it's so cool that you're doing this and you're clean and they put so much like emphasis on the clean thing. Mm. But once I wasn't anymore, it was kind of like, and, it, and having like different views politically or, or religiously or whatever yeah. kind of gave way to, uh, them being like, well, you're just in that toxic environment. It was, it mm. went to from being like, it's so cool that you're performing every night to you're just hanging out with the wrong crowd, yeah, and whores and atheists. Mm -hmm. Like it really was that where you're like, ooh, okay. But I mean, but they were like that when I was in high school. They were like that when we were like, don't you think gay people should have rights? And they were like, you just feel that way because all your teachers are Democrats. Like, <laughs> it really, it's like, okay. Like, there wasn't a lot of like, good yeah, point, guys. Right, right. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely didn't have like, my dad's a performer. Uh, like, he's a really good singer. He mm. doesn't perform for a living or anything, but he... Got talent. Did in like college and stuff. He's yeah. a music teacher. Yeah, he's like a really, really good singer. Um, and maybe if he had grown up in a different place, mm -hmm. I think, you know, and even thought it was possible. I'm who like, knows? Yeah. Yeah, who knows? I'm like, right. he, like, he has like a Sky's Broadway voice. Like, he's like an incredible, plays piano, like, reads music, all that stuff. So I'm sure there was a part of him that was kind of like living vicariously through. Yeah. Me being able to do that at first. What, was was it like, I mean, did it take a while for them to embrace the success of it? Or like, No, it's been like the opposite, where they were like really proud at first, and then as I got uh, less clean, yeah. it was like... We don't like this. Yeah. How, what, what's the What's the vibe now? Oh, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we... Are you, are you, is it like, you're estranged from, like, do you, are you close with them anymore, or? Not really. I mean, mm. my stepmom is, uh, she's like a very, she's like a very cool person that I respect a lot, and she um, is just like very much like, she and my dad are a team, and uh, I talk to her occasionally. My dad and I haven't spoken for a while, and it's, you know, we have, we have issues besides that. It's not like, you don't support my art. It's like, we just, there's a lot of, uh, you know, I don't even know how to say it. Character differences? What's a difference yeah. in belief? Like all that stuff. It's just stuff. like you're not going to see eye to eye on yeah, some important not gonna stuff, get, right? Yeah, you're not going to see eye to eye. There's certain things that you realize about your childhood growing up where you're like, ooh, that wasn't okay. Mm. Like, you know, and if, right. if your parents aren't, you know, in a place where they can have that accept conversation that with or, you or, or accept or it. Well, I, yeah. I saw on your Instagram you were doing like a Q&A and somebody said like, w were, was your like religious upbringing like kind of like quirky and weird or was it like truly traumatic and you had a smile on your face and you were like, truly traumatic. Yeah, no, it, it <laughs> like fucks with you for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I don't, it's it's boring to be like a privileged white girl who like grew up in the suburbs going like, it was really hard. See, but Being no. Being forced to believe in God. I, like, I don't want to be that person. That. Like, <laughs> I, yes, again, as always, there are starving people all across the right. world. There are people who are dying. Yes, I get that. But like, 
your brain reacts to what you're, you know, so like, right. I used to always be like, oh my God, these like college kids complaining about their midterms, like that's, right. but in their world, that's the most stressful thing that's ever happened to them. So they're yeah. freaking the fuck out the same way that I'm freaking out about like my mortgage and my divorce, you know? And right. it's just like the way your brain waves are working. So, and I, and especially something like that, I, I wouldn't even like throw that, that disclaimer on it where it's like, if you are growing up in a way where so you're, someone's forcing you to like, live or believe in something you don't believe in that's pretty fucked up yeah there's like a lot of guilt involved and like my mom died when i was a kid and there was a lot of like we if we just all pray enough we'll heal her and mm -hmm. then she died and everybody's like well she is that's healed. god's plan oh. she's in heaven oh my god i guess we prayed for her to be healed and she Jeez. technically is and i was like can we just chalk this up to god said no like, do we really have to spin it yeah. so God's still the guy? The like guy, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's a great God impression. I, I, I'm the guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not answering your prayers, but technically, that's the way I am answering your prayers. It's yeah, like, it just is like, oh, we should have been more specific. Maybe like birthday cake wishes to the sky don't do anything. Yeah, and that's that was tough because once that happened, I was like, oh. This isn't re like I didn't feel how everyone else felt. I didn't feel like, well, we'll see her again. Like that was what everyone mm -hmm. said. It's like, well, we'll see her in heaven. And I'm like, well, I don't think I feel that way. And you grow up so terrified of hell. Oh my God. The whole religion is fucked up. It's all so negative yeah. and fearful. It's like yeah. if you do this, then this bad thing happens as opposed to, you know, if you do this, this good thing happens. It's like so much more. Yeah. Punishment and hellfire and brimstone. It's like, it's just so funny to me what gets viewed as a cult and an extremist uh, religion versus what's your everyday shit. It's like, the, the fucking big thing on the wall is a guy nailed to a cross. Yeah. That's pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, that's <laughs> like know? our mascot. Yeah, that's if, you, like... if you saw, if there was another religion that had like a burning body, you'd be like, oh my God, that's, that's crazy. That's dark, it's like man. just the same as nailing someone to a cross. <laughs> so, but no, you know, it's fascinating to me. I mean, I think that's one of the the craziest, wildest, fascinating things about like humans is that how much uh, religion has like taken over for, but I, I think like, so for you, w is it a level of like uh, intelligence? Like, or like, why were you not just kind of like all the other kids being like, yeah, prayers work. Like something in your brain and your heart said like, this is not real. I don't know. I don't yeah. even think it's like, oh, I was smarter than everybody else. I, I just didn't feel it. Maybe I was just depressed. Yeah, well, <laughs> like, I, I guess I'm sad and, and that's that makes me I a bad Christian. If it is emotional, like part of me does think it's sometimes like an intelligence thing where I'm just like, I, I know you're uh, like, you have a brain and you're telling me that you think this magical book is going to tell you that this, and I don't want to like, you know, if you have your beliefs, you have your beliefs, but I'm just like, how can you believe some of this stuff when I know you're a smart person otherwise? Yeah. But I mean, it's got to be really tough when you're a kid and in a extremely religious situation and you're the one who's like, I don't feel that, guys. Can someone else help me with that? You know. Yeah, because then it's like, if you don't feel those things, you just feel like you're doing it wrong. So mm -hmm. you're like privately feeling really guilty and scared because you're like, I'm the one who's gonna go to hell, even <sighs> though I'm saying all that, like obsessively, like OCD, like saying the prayers over and over really? again every night. And because you're age like, are I we can't. Talking for that? Oh, I mean, from the time I was last like, week eight. Yeah, from <laughs> yeah. the time I was like eight until college probably like maybe late God. high school just like so scared all the time and I mean you you're told that the the antidote for like anxiety and depression is God mm -hmm. so they're like just pray harder just read your Bible like anytime I was sad or I wanted to like take antidepressants or something my dad was just like, you just need to spend more time with God. Like, you just need to read the Bible more. And I'm like, I don't... I don't think that's this working. This isn't helping. Like, yeah. I don't... But then it would work for other people. And then you'd go, okay, I guess I'm wrong. Like, because this is saving so is people's lives. Thing. It's a problem for... Yeah, I just... Yeah. I don't know. And then other times I'm like, is this even, like, really working for anybody? Or are you guys just people who want to have an identity and this is an easy one to have? Absolutely. Like, but I think some people it really is, like... They believe it. It's important to them. There's cool Christians who are like, yeah, yeah this is what no, I think. No like, doubt. it's I don't know if it's true. Like, there are Christians like that who are like, hey, if it's not true, it's not true. But I think sure. there like are good that, lessons here. and That's how it should be. Like, yeah. let's take away some of the valuable good stuff and not, like, 
leave everything up to it. You know, it's like you still have to work hard. You still have to, you know, make your own way. And it's not just going to fall out of the sky from God. And bad things do happen. And like the yeah. whole, God's plan shit is just crazy to me. Where it's like, and I, I wonder sometimes, like, you know, if you hadn't lost your mom, because I feel like that's when some skepticism sets in, right? Yeah. God is so great. And he took my mom away. Like, fuck that guy. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> you know? I don't know. I, I don't know who I would have been if that didn't happen. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe I would have. Because my mom was religious. Like, right. my mom didn't think she was As long die. as things go good, religion probably is all great. gravy. Yeah. We're, you know, we're a happy family. We're living good. I'm happy. You know, and yeah. some bad shit happens. And you go, well, why would he do that? Yeah. You know, that's, and where, nobody I can that's answer where I lose it. track. It's like, yeah. That's, that's where I lose the script. It's tough. Yeah, and then just all the, like... The guilt and shame around, like, well, if you have sex before marriage, you're this and that. It's so unrealistic. Mm-hmm. And, like, all the people telling you that didn't even wait. Like, I remember I found out my parents didn't wait because I, like, read my mom's journal after she died. And I was like, are you, you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Like, just, like, you're going to lie to me for years? Yeah. And he's like, well, I didn't want to tell you because then it would be an excuse for you to go out and do that. And I'm like. It's not an excuse for me to go. It's an it's a let me go live my life. Yeah, truly. And you, you know, it's that, not like, it's not like uh, you know, you're doing heroin or something. Right, it's like, seriously. I mean, I guess in his mind it probably is akin to that, but it's like, yeah. fuck. It's really, it's really, it was, and it was a lot of like church when you were a teenager. It mm-hmm. was like every other week was like, don't, Touch each other, right? And yeah. that though at the time of your life where you know you're exploding from the inside out, being like, all right. I want to do is touch, all I want to do is see, all I want to do is live, drink, smoke. Yeah. And you can't. I mean, that the hypocrisy is what gets me. That's what you know. Yeah. And every it seems like every you know head of churches are horrible. You know, it's like the people who who are supposed to be the, the examples are always the liars and the cheats and the steals and and then it still just gets brushed under the rug. You know. Yeah, just, it's pretty, I mean, that's, once I started talking about that stuff in my stand-up, I, I get a lot of messages from people who are like, oh, I'm still untangling all of that, mm-hmm. like, who are very much, you know, grew up that way and feel that way. Because you're told, like, not only, like, if you have sex, you're dirty and bad, if someone else has sex with you, they don't respect you, mm-hmm. you shouldn't trust them. Mm-hmm. So then like, even if you do get to a place where you're, you're like, like, well, I'm not bad if I have sex, then you're like, but this, this person doesn't respect guts. me. Yeah, yeah, they're like, yeah. they're, I was told I'm like, trash. yeah, I was told if you date somebody who's had sex before you in high school, then they're the type of person, you know, not even that, if they have sex with you, even if you're both virgins, they are gonna cheat on you. Because they're the type of person who can't control, can't control themselves. Like that's how we, they would get so deep in your brain. We're like, I guess that makes sense. Uh, and then for years, you just feel that way. Even and to a point where you're like, I don't even know what this is, and I need so much therapy to figure it I out. I know, yeah. But again, that's like incredible to recognize that. That's like a lot of self awareness and general awareness to be like, this isn't normal, and I need help. Right. To figure it out. Yeah. When, when did that like light switch go off? Oh god. Probably probably like probably when I was like twenty. Like not that long ago. I was gonna say. Like, so you know eight years ago? Yeah, so in eight years you go from like f- trying to figure out, like abandon your first twenty years of like teaching and molding. Yeah. To undo all that, to then start to live a little bit, to like rock star comedian career in eight years. Yeah, it's a lot you know, of... That's fucking, cor- like, insane. In a good way, I hope, for you, but, like, also just, like, holy shit, you almost need therapy for that. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, look, we we have it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, that also happens in chunks, too, where, like, at first, you're like, I don't know if I believe this, and then it's like, I do believe it, I'm just not as strict on mm-hmm. these certain principles. Sure. Uh, like, okay, I'm a, I'm a Christian, but I'm gonna be, like, a cool one who swears and does whatever I want. And then you finally get to a place where it's like, you just don't believe this. Right. And if you're wrong, you're going to hell, I guess. Yeah. But you I'll take that don't, chance. <laughs> yeah, it's like you don't you don't believe this. You're not you're not that person. Yeah. So stop trying to be that person. Yeah, you're never gonna be a that. round hole. It's like Yeah. I'm like, this is like me trying to be like a ballet dancer. Yeah, like you're just, just not, not built for it. You weren't put here for it. Yep. You don't have it in you. Right. So just stop. Yeah. So are you like atheist now? 
I'm not atheist. I just don't fucking know. Right. Is that agnostic? I'm like, yeah, any, I, don't know what I can't imagine. I, I just can't imagine being somebody who's like, yeah, this is what happens. I've got the answer. Yeah. I, I'm like, you think it, any of us have this figured I, out? It's funny. Like you see it with COVID in like tangible questions and answers. Yeah. And then it's like, this is the biggest mystery in the universe. Yeah. <laughs> it's the biggest mystery in the history of existence. And you think you got it. And you yeah. think that that book or that guy or whatever you believe in, like nobody fucking knows. And then also when you like, and you start to realize it's like, oh, they did all of this to like get your money. You know, right. they did all this to get you to come every week to donate money to like, you know, fund their fucking lives. That, yeah. but it's just how, how arrogant do you have to be to be like, I understand the mysteries of the universe. And there's so many different types of religions. Like, look, I'm, I hope we have an afterlife too, guys. I, yeah. Right. I, not existing sounds scary. Also sounds kind of relaxing. <laughs> but like, if I would love it, I I just don't think we're all gonna get to the afterlife, and they're gonna go, "You got it." I think we're all gonna get there and go, "Who was closest?" Yeah, right, right, Who right. Who was like right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you guys came close, but then you did that thing. Yeah. With that commandment, that one was off. That was and, really. Yeah. yeah, I mean, these you dudes... guys blowing up with the virgins <laughs> way off. You guys over here, you know. Yeah, flagellating yourself. I mean, yeah. I mean, it is. It is. It's a wild. I. I. I cannot even put myself in the shoes. Like, my. I always wonder what I'm gonna do because, like, my grandma was hardcore. Um, no, I shouldn't say that. Like to someone like you, she just went to church every week and like really believed. Not hardcore. But and then so like my mom kind of was, and then like once my grandma passed away, we kind of like waxed. You know, it was like we were doing it for her. And then there are certain things I do for my mom that, like, when they move on, I'll probably not do. And then I'm like, I don't know what to do for my kids. Because part of me sometimes I'm like, I feel like even in the tiniest way, I'm supporting a organization that, like, uh, you know, pushes, like, rape under the rug. Even in the tiniest way. And I don't want to do that. But then right. other times I'm like, it's good for community. And just, like, right. I did it so she should do it and he should do it. But... I'm like, I, again, don't know. So maybe I yeah. should put you in there. But we're and also like, all working it. in comedy. So, you know, yeah. there's, like, <laughs> yeah, right, find an right. industry that doesn't push rape under the rug. Yeah, and... right. I know. You're <laughs> right. You're, it's so true. It's like, like you're hard-pressed to find any organization that's, you yeah. know, doing everything the right way. Although calling comedy an organization is, you know, that's a... That's a stretch, but yeah, there's... What would you call it? An, I guess an industry? industry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I it, mean, but it, but I think that about comedy sometimes where I'm like, oh, my God, I'm in this, like, gross industry, like... Where like all the it's just entertainment though. Like I know, the entertainment but, industry is like really depressing sometimes when you like find out certain things. Right. At different levels. I'm not even talking about like rape, just like just like people being like bad people. Like, it's, like, it's like a gigantic don't meet your heroes. Yeah. Like don't go into this world because you're gonna realize everything's pretty fake. This is yes. fabricated, this is phony, this is mean, this is and then the really bad shit, you know? Yeah. That's why I I mean, yes, it's an industry. But it almost is its own little cult, you know, yeah. where you have this way of thinking that certain things have to be a certain way. And if you do it too fast or don't, I mean, think about it. It's, it's almost like, no, 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 you have to suffer long enough before we can call you a success. Yes. Very religious in a way that's like, well, what do you yeah. mean? Like, why do I have to do penance over here? It's just working out for me when I'm 26. That's a good you know? point. That's Put a that one. Bring that to therapy next I week. I will bring that. I'm <laughs> sorry it was yesterday. I'm going to schedule a second one this week, I think. I'm like, I have some follow-up notes from Kevin. Um, what What was, like, the the breaking point for you? The, like, you know, when did you get, uh, like, when did it go from, you know, open mic type shit to, it, it, I just don't know anybody else's story that went that fast, so it's like, how did it progress? I, you know, weirdly, I think starting off in church like probably helped in a lot of ways. Oh, so now she likes the religion now, thing. Now, you know what? I'm you a Christian You hypocritical again. bitch. <laughs> I'm a Christian again. I, again. I, I think that you got more time on stage, like longer mm. periods of time on stage um, in front of like crowds. Yeah. And you were working clean, which is... It's always harder, right? Harder to do. It's easier to go dirty from clean than it is to like oh my god I could never it. If yeah I, if I have it's, to clean it up it's like mm. I mean I, I don't want to clean it up now I'm right. like they ask me to do corporate sometimes I'm like why well, like I don't yeah. want to work on that for three days <laughs> I, I don't want to go back and watch my old Conan sets and go, I guess I could do this again yeah uh, but yeah I mean I, I was also like I was like a teenager so when I did start doing mics I was also in San Diego which is a smaller scene there aren't a lot of younger people 
I guess there are, but like not as young as me. There's right. not a lot of women. Right. You stand out a little bit more for those reasons. Yep. And like, yeah, whatever. I was good or whatever. Like, I, I don't know. Like, don't. But a lot don't of people are good. That spot. But that's, a lot that's, of people. No, are good. that's what we're working through here. I'm not gonna let you skip over that. I, I, Chris Stefano was here right before you, and I was just like talking about you in general, saying I was having you in, and I mentioned I was like, I want to talk about how like quickly it went, and I said I'm sure there's some people who like you know discount because of that, and he said, you know what the difference is? She's good, and that's it's like nice. if you, if you got the goods. It's like anything else. It's like in sports. Like he's a rookie, she's a rookie, but they're they're better than you. They just are, you know. Yeah. Like there is some element of that. Yeah, you got to pay your dues. Yeah, you got to work on some things. But if you're good, you're good. So that's like you know. Yeah, I mean, but again, it's I think I think Chris is at the cellar tonight, and I'm in my head going like, man, if these guys see me bomb in New York, yeah. they're gonna be like, guess we were wrong. Uh, like I know, it but... really it really does feel like you are constantly trying to prove yourself. Yeah. But uh. But yeah, I mean, even if you work really hard and you do the road and you do all these, like I've done every type of gig you could do. I've done corporates, I've done churches, I've done cruise ships, Oof. I've done like clubs, I've done mics, I've opened for people in theaters. Like I've done if every that's not enough type. to get you into heaven, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> exactly. then they really got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, you know, I've done everything I could do in the time I've been here. Right. So it's not like I've been... Yeah, you won a contest and we're put on, like, you know, it's like I've yeah. done all the shit that you do. I just didn't have to do it for 20 years. Also, like, like so I'm sorry. Did. How many females do you know who blow up later in life? Like, mm -hmm. I've had that talk with, like, male comics where I'm like, I don't, I don't know if you understand, like, you can blow up when you're 40. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't really have that option. That's true. not as likely so for me. Well, And I also think it's like... I would think because there are less girls will like and an, and an audience in general will like jump on it quicker. It's like I think yeah, you do have to like as a guy, you got to cut through a lot of other people who look and sound just like you where it's like I'm sure there's a point of like oh my god, I finally my sister loves you cuz she's like I it's it's like she likes a lot like all comics, but she's like Taylor like speaks about my life. Oh, so nice. I'm going to jump on it like right right then and there. And I don't have to wait, I don't have to discover you when I'm when you're 40, like I can you right, know, do yeah. it now. And that's the nice thing about, again, that's the nice thing about the internet is like, we don't all have to just be Seinfeld going, what does everybody do? Yeah. You're like, this is. I'm gonna do this group. Yeah, this yeah. is my stuff. Mm -hmm. And just everyone who has my stuff, come over here. Right. And we'll be a group. Right. And then everybody who doesn't have that experience can go watch someone else who does. Like, See, this is very religious, I'm telling <laughs> you. Think about it. Everybody Say that in a church <laughs> and it all makes sense. You're the leader. <laughs> Everyone you come to cult. my cult, yeah. I mean and, group. And we drink the juice and <laughs> love these sneakers. But yeah, I don't, I don't think people are trying to be super observational anymore because it's more so just like, this is my personal experience. Yeah. I think relatability became king mm -hmm. at some point. Like, yeah. Um, and you, you realize that being relatable, you had to be specific. Yes. And you had to be, it's so, it's so hard now to be a comedian because you have to just give so much of who you are. Mm -hmm. You've like put out so much, like you like doing videos every day, like mm -hmm. the blogging, like mm -hmm. you have to, People have to feel like they know you. Yes. That's why people I, with podcasts blow up. Yeah, I, I think that it's, it's. I think if you're really, really, really good, you can get away, it's almost, then you can build mystery if it's like, oh my God, like I only see them like once a year on a special or something like right. that. And it, they're incredible. Yeah. But if you're not like incredible, it's gotta be like, let me show you how I am in every facet of my personality so that maybe you like one of yeah. those things and like, you know, and latch on because. Yeah. Which sucks. It's like, I'll show you what I'm like as a dad. I'll show you what I'm like when I'm partying. I'll show you what I'm like when I'm lazy. I'll show you. I hope you like some of it. Yeah. Uh, because again, there's just so many people like doing that. But do you ever get to a point where you're like, oh no, I didn't keep anything for me? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually, I don't, I, I like think I should feel that way though. Oh, interesting. Like, I, I don't think it actually bothers me, but I'm like, maybe what I have learned is that like, shocking, like breaking news, you don't know everything. And all your feelings what? are not uh, correct when you're like 25. Yeah. Uh, and so like things that I, you know, used to like definitely be like, yeah, this is not a big deal. I'm like, I do feel like that's a big deal now. So maybe down the road I'll be like, wow, I really like put my whole life out there when I shouldn't have. 
part of me feels like, oh, that's cool. Like, it's fine. You know who I am. You know, I do. I mean, because so I, I went through this divorce. I had cheated. It was a scandal. It was a bad thing. Oh, really? And, yeah, it was I like. I wanted to was, ask, but I was like, because I was like, well, I'm yeah. saying a lot of stuff about me. No, yeah. Like, it was, it was, I feel like you, you know, should be I, spilling some shit I also. I was in, in a marriage <laughs> that did not. It was not good. How long were you married? Four years. It was, oh, okay. You know, and, and there was problems that I should have addressed and didn't, and then I felt trapped, and I certainly didn't handle it the right way. And then it became public, and it was like, it was like uh, People Magazine, Daily Mail, TMZ, Ooh. where I was like, me, like, whoa, whoa, I don't even know people like knew me. And, yeah. You know, and I don't have a publicist. I don't have a manager. I don't, That's like, not a fun way to find out you're famous. <laughs> right. So, I mean, guys around here, like, because everyone's an asshole, you know, they're like, hey, you made it to People Magazine. Right. It's right. like, you're not where I wanted to. <laughs> um, and, like, you know, I will. I, I, that's what I obviously get crushed for and a lot of people know me for that and I'm always just like you know you just don't know the full story and that's all I'm going to say about it because I don't want to gossip and talk about things you know but um, so that like at that point I was like I had talked about the marriage I had talked about having kids all of that was out there and then I wish I was like I wish I could take that all yeah. back now and so you know it's like I guess I learned there it's like y you, you're willing to put everything out there when the going is good and then when that shit gets bad it's too late. That toothpaste is out of the tube, you know? Yeah. But I also hate, uh, like, living, preparing for, like, the absolute worst, you know? It's like, I didn't think that my marriage was going to fall apart and that was going to happen to me. And had yeah. I been like, should I post this video? I don't know. One day, I might be in TMZ in a scandal. Like, right. it seems like a kind of pessimistic way to live life, but also maybe the more, you know, safe way, like, conservative way, like, you know, prepare for the worst sort of thing. But, But I think all of this just falls under the umbrella of like the internet is a fucked up place. Yeah. And like none of us know how to really like navigate it, you know? There's no no answer to that. And it's always changing and like I'm nervous every time I post something. I'm like, Are you? Oh, yeah. every yeah. time. You're like, I don't know how this is gonna go. Yeah, I was uh, I was listening to um Shane Gillis was on with Ryan Sickler and was like, I still like after his whole scandal, he's like, I still do my comedy the way I do it. I don't let it phase change that. But then when I press publish, I'm always like, fuck, 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 what's going to happen next? Who's going to, you know, what did I do? Who did I offend? Yeah. And I think in some levels that's good. That's known as like, okay, you're thinking about other people and how it's going to be received. But that feeling of like, you know, press publish and oh my God, how, how, how what's going to go wrong now is, I mean, it's crippling, you know? Yeah, you almost have to just be, I have so much respect now for comics that just don't seem to give a shit about like anything. Yeah. Not just like their material, but just like what anybody thinks about them. Mm -hmm. Like the same, there are people that I used to be like, well, they they could be nicer, they could be better at this or that. And now I'm like, I think those people might be doing it right. Yes. Like the ones that yes, everybody like, go talk, on. Like, yeah, the ones who yes. people talk shit about. You're like, they're. You notice how they're not here, right? You notice how they <laughs> yeah. were here for like ten minutes. Yes. And yeah. now they're gone because mm -hmm. they're happy. Yeah. And they went back to their life. Yes. <laughs> like, you know, or like really successful people that, as you said, have that like mystery around them where you're mm -hmm. like, oh, I never see them. They just put out like two killer specials and then they just kind of Fade disappear to the background. and then, oh, they have yeah. a movie now. And you're like, right. oh, I guess How they're writing happen? a movie. Like they weren't sitting there like worrying about the fucking internet every two minutes, you know? I mean, part of me, you know, I, I don't think you should ever take it to that level of like, you know, being like, intentionally uh, hurtful to people, but like the don't give a fuck attitude works. Like, yeah. And it works like, for you, and it works for like the world. Like, yeah. I mean, from the politics all the way down to little things. Like, just do it how you want to do it, and say that your your way is the right way. And people are just kind of like, oh yeah, it is. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. really cool. That you like that, and you're like, yeah, I'm just not. Afraid. But also, you can you can you can like see which people can do that and which people can't. You I know? know. Like in sports, it's they're just like. Like there's a guy like Dennis Rodman. I don't know if you know sports at all. He's like a maniac, mm -hmm. like crazy behavior, drugs, sex, rock and roll, piercings, hair dye, tattoos. So he could go out there and like murder someone tomorrow, and people would be like, "That's what Dennis Rodman does." Yeah. But then there was a guy like A Rod who was like all buttoned up, and the minute that you heard he did steroids, it was like, "Oh my god!" Right. The squeaky clean guy did something wrong. Yeah. So unless I think unless you already have the reputation of don't give a fuck, 
You can't just become don't give a fuck. I know. Because people that's can smell so it. Hard. If, if, if all of a sudden you were like, I don't give a shit about anything, you're like, so yes, many they fucks. do. Yes, you do, Taylor. I know, you give them those fucks. I can't like I just get cool out of nowhere. <laughs> that fucking sucks. Yeah, because even like I, when I think I'm like being cool and fine, people think I'm like standoffish. And like, mm-hmm. r- like they're like, Taylor just seems really standoffish. Like they'll say that to friends of mine. And I'm like, I'm fucking scared of right. everybody. I have horrible social anxiety. Like, yeah. I have shows tonight, and it's ruined my week. Like, I, I'm i so nervous, and I'm just about trying to About being on stay. stage? No, just about being, like, Alive. around people. You <laughs> yeah. know, you're just like, yeah. I, I'm i just, I, I almost, I like podcasts, because you're just like, oh, I'm going to talk to someone for an hour. Sure. Like, this is nice. Yeah. But, like, especially, like, in New York, where I'm like, oh, God, people don't know me here, like, it's just different, and like I had a friend have a birthday party recently, and afterwards she was like, "You seem miserable," and I'm like, "I oh, thought no. I was actually having a pretty good time." <laughs> that was for me, like wild. That was loose. me killing it at a party. I thought, like, I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't go to parties. Like, what? She's like, "Well, you just came so early." I'm like, "You told me that's when it started." And I'm like, "I don't know." Like, what are you talking about? Yo, socially, social awkwardness translates to oh. like mean or rude or, or sad or miserable and it's like I'm sorry I just don't I'm not good at this I'm just like, not good at it like yeah. if you talk to me I'll be so great I promise I'll be yeah. so nice but I don't want to bother anybody else and I've had it happen with people I like where they were like oh hey and I'm like oh hi and I remember it going great and fine and then later they'll say to someone else like does Taylor not like me uh, and then I'm like what yeah. like that that I also think is a, is a problem for girls that sucks yeah I, I think guys I don't know, we just look like dumb idiots where girls, it's like between resting bitch face or, know. you know, catty girls, stereotypes. It's like if you're not, yeah. and then if you are like, oh my God, how are you? It's like that bitch is fake. Yeah, so right. like what do, what do you, I feel bad for you on and that And you're part. like, yes, I am fake. I don't want to be doing this. <laughs> right, I am I'm lying to your face right now. Do you know now. what me real is? It's this. <laughs> so would you rather have this or would you rather have me be fake and like hug you? Like what do you want? Right. Yeah, you want the real me? It's like we're gonna, I'm going to like pour my guts out about my anxiety and my yes. past and my future and you know. If you ask or, me what I'm doing, I'll fucking tell you. Right, yeah. how you are want? you? Ew. I could either just say fine, good, how are you? Yeah. Or we could do this. Yeah. <laughs> Which oh my fucking god. One do you want? So many times. I think I did it to you when I came in. You're like, "How's it going?" And I'm like, "Oh, you know." Like, and I'm like, "I wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> I was supposed to be like, good." Yeah. I do. I do appreciate a good like. Okay. You know. Don't yeah. tell me it's going fantastic if it's not. You know. Look, I had a panic attack on the subway last night. That's how it's going, Kevin. It's fine. We're fine. It's you know. It's. <laughs> Got woken up they by construction attacks. at 8.30 in the morning. It's it's, it's not great, but it's, it's doable. Great, but it's doable, yeah. yeah. The, I, uh, like getting older, learning about the misery that is panic attacks and anxiety, like true anxiety, like things like you think, like I remember thinking I, I had had migraines before when I was younger. Yeah. And then I had a real migraine. I was like, oh, this is what they're talking about, yeah. you know? And then same sort of thing with like anxiety where it's like, oh, I've been nervous before. And then it's like, oh, I, you know, not wake up at two in the morning in a pool of sweat trying to fix everything wrong in the world yes. from your bed anxiety, you know? Yes. Like, oh, this is what they're talking about. And this is why people say getting old sucks. And this is, and there's no stopping. No. Like, you know, that's that's the real. Do kids help with all the dread? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they make it harder. Yeah, that's what I've. Yeah, I mean, in the I've moment. I've heard both with, things. Yeah, in the moment. Uh, Yes, but then when I'm or when I'm not with them or I'm or sleeping at night and then I'm like, well, I have to f- make sure they're good and do this for them and that for them and this ex- expense has to be paid and this bill and so it's more stressful. But then like um, I was at the park with them yesterday like, and I, we were like playing Floor is Lava and Hide and Seek and somehow all of a sudden I was playing with them and all like the other kids. And I was just like, well, if I didn't have kids, I wouldn't be playing, I, I was like the Pied Piper, they're all like running around and following <laughs> me, you know? And I was like, if I, you know, so that was like a little moment of joy that was just yeah. like, that was because I had kids and that yeah. temporarily like forgot about everything else. The only way you could have done that as an adult otherwise is if you were in Squid Game. <laughs> yeah, or on like a, on a list of some sort. <laughs> if you're at the playground playing with kids, make sure you have kids there that are yours. Otherwise you're in a lot of trouble. Squid Game, man, it's, it's like, uh, stuff like that is funny too where it's like, have you seen Squid Game? It's like amazing. You got to watch it. 255 people are murdered in like the first minute. I know. Did and you finish like, it? Yeah. Okay. Did you? Spoiler alert. 
Can yeah. we do that? Well, yeah. Like, I Did you like the end? I hated the end. We all hated yeah. the end! But I also think it's a testament to the show, because usually if a show, if an end sucks, the show sucks. And most people are like, yeah, that ending sucked, but like, she still got to watch it. Which I think is an interesting... It's a, you know, it should have been... That end sucked. It should have been... Sh I'm like, it's weird because I'm like, that should have been shorter, and I don't even think yeah. that. I think it should have... Been different. <laughs> they should have spent time... Once we hit VIPs... Yes. It went downhill. Mm -hmm. Like... Totally agree. Those guys, I had no connection to them. There was no, no... I didn't know what to think of them. I also, like, the old guy was like... The minute they didn't show the old guy getting killed. I know. Because everyone else, you watch their fucking brain right. matter explode. I was like, all right, something's going on there. And then and then I guess they have to set up for season two where he's like, you know, turns around on the plane. It's like, go see your daughter. Go see your yes, fucking daughter. Seriously. You just fought through a murder game for, you know, weeks We're on end. We're supposed to like, like you yeah, after right. that? With your, with your red hair. Fuck oh, you. I didn't like it. No, I really didn't like it. it. And it was like, it was just so obvious at the end where yeah. I'm like, this is kind of surfacey, guys. Like, yes. I thought we kind of all got this that it was rich people doing it for fun. Like, right. does that need to be said in a hospital bed? Like, right. really? We know. I thought we were going to get into what the cop. All I cared about was that cop. Me too. That's all I cared about. Yeah, and it was like nothing. Yeah. You get nothing? That, that could have been like anybody. You know, that could have been the no. second half of the show. Here's what I thought was going to happen I thought that it was gonna be a whole thing where you found out that like if you win the game, you have to be one of the people who now who runs now does the it game. To them. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, but maybe that's too obvious. I'm like, okay, so maybe his brother won and it made him so miserable afterward that then he came back to run the game because yeah. it's the only thing he understands now and he has all this guilt about what he did in the game, but the only way he can make peace with it is if he watches other people be that Let's shitty go. for the rest yeah. of his life. And none of that Nothing. happened. Nothing. None of it. <laughs> yeah. That is the the uh, curse or whatever of like modern TV. I, like what else do you watch? Are you do you watch are you a TV watcher? Yeah, we watch it. Because like, stuff. you know, starting with Lost and ranging through True Detective and right. all of these things, you come up with these and and then you can go on Reddit and crowdsource them where some there are some like really good fucking fan fiction writers out there. Yeah. Where I'm like, that's amazing. Yeah. And it's better than what, you know, the writers came up with. I know. And then you get disappointed, but that doesn't mean it was bad. It just means it wasn't what this person on the internet said. But it was like that was actually pretty bad. I know. It it would be cool if there was a show that just Every season was them doing that season over again, but with, with like a fan fiction's want. notes. Love yeah. that. Just to be like, oh, you wanted this? Fine. We'll give it to we'll you. We'll do that. That's what they should have done with Game of Thrones. Yeah. They should have said, we're sorry. We're going to rewind. We're going to go back over. You know, yep. we'll redo the battle. We'll make sure you can see it. We'll make yeah. <laughs> sure Jon Snow actually kills the guy. We'll, you yeah. Because that, that's. Oof. I, I, I love television. I would love to be in TV, but I'm also like. I feel like going along with this anxiety shit, it's like the minute I had a hit, I would start being like, well, I'm going to I'm gonna fail the finale. Like, you know what I oh, mean? Oh, for sure. Season two, like, don't worry, dude. You have like till season eight. Nope, nope. I'm going yeah. to freak out about the 200th episode because everyone's going to hate it. Well, I mean, now everything comes win. out at once. Yeah, so that's So they true can't too. even like adjust as yeah, it's, it's going like, on. I hope like, like they it. killed that girl. And it was like, really? You're gonna kill the girl <laughs> with a shard of glass? Yeah, oh, like, that she like sucked. slowly bleeds out, like, that but she was like so badass and like the cool character. No, it's like, and now she dies from a fucking. And then when else gets hit by the glass in that big explosion? Just her, like getting. Yeah, I just. You know what's funny? Everyone was talking. You know, that's now the number one show of all time on Netflix. Yeah. And it took ten years. He wrote that in two thousand nine. All yeah. that shit. It's like, you know why? Because the ending fucking sucked. Because yeah. a bunch of people were like, yeah, this is good in the beginning, but the ending sucks. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. I read some interview with him where he was like, yeah, you know, I could do a second season. I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> I just, well, are you like, trying to be cool? He, he's he's gonna, I, I, I feel like, sell on Squid Game season two right now because they're going to try to do something and it's going to be... I mean, they're definitely gonna do a second. You have to, I mean, you have to. but and I don't like, blame them. I'd be like, get that money and, and absolutely it's good, you know, get that money. I hope it's Fix good. Fix what but you it's, did not yeah, do. Right, right, right. Like, right. I'll probably Listen watch enough. it. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. No. I mean, I'll watch anything at this point. Like, I know. Come on. Is now. that our, our? Is is you? What is a like a night off for Taylor? What are you doing? What am I watching or what no, am I doing? What, uh, are you going out or are you staying home and watching something? Are you ordering food? Are you oh, reading books? Or are you, and, yeah. I'm probably staying home and ordering food and yeah. watching something. What's your like? you get nights off and you're like, ooh, a night off. But it's like you 
technically you flew all day. Uh -huh. So not really, or like, yeah. oh, you did podcasts and meetings all day. Like, I that's off. Yeah. Like, that's off, yeah. truly. And like tomorrow, I have off, but I have to do like you know, I have to take photos in the afternoon, and then I'm like, oh, I'll see my aunt and uncle while they're in town at night, and it's like. I don't know what a day off is anymore right. because if I don't have work, then I'm fulfilling like personal relationship obligations. So I guess a, a real day off for me is like seeing like my sister uh -huh. and we just like do whatever. Like that's a real yeah. day off. Yeah. yeah. Or like Sam and I being like, all right, we're not going to do anything. In theory, this has never happened. Right. But if we were both <laughs> like, let's not do anything today. Yeah. <laughs> let's just, you know, watch stuff. I mean. Um, What's your go-to food order? Oh God! I mean, if you're having like a I like fat Mexican day food. cheat night, do you yeah. like expensive Mexican or cheap Mexican? I like both. I like all of it. I think that expensive Mexican is one of the craziest things in the world. Really? I think it's all kind of like shredded this and melted cheese, and like when it's like fifty dollars for this, I, I could eat Taco Bell and be just as happy as you know the fanciest Mexican. Well, in the world. Taco Bell, let's not go crazy. Although Taco Bell Bite is my tongue, girl. Taco Bell is my go-to on like, the road. I just had a crunch wrap like two for weeks the first ago. time. No, no, no. Oh, just. Okay. Just I mean, ninja, just recently yeah. I did. You go crunch wrap over cheesy gordita crunch? I yeah, because I can't do the the like dairy thing is uh, hard for okay. me. Mm -hmm. So I always do crunch wrap with uh, beans Amazing. instead of beef. No sour cream. Mm. Oh, I love sour cream. I think sour cream is the most underrated uh, no. con condiment in the game. It's amazing. I just it can't. It just fucks you up. Yeah. It's upsetting. But yeah, I mean, obviously when I'm in LA and like San Diego. Like cheap Mexican food because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's everywhere and it's amazing. Right. So then to come out here and it, usually it's like you got to go to a restaurant for mm -hmm. Mexican food. And you're like, this is good, but it's it's not a burrito you eat on a curb. No, right, right, right. Like yeah. I don't know anywhere to get that here. No, that's true. If if you're like in San Diego and LA, are you on the beach? Are you going out in the sun? I like the beach. Yeah, yeah. I like the beach. Beach a lot. over pool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely beach over pool. Don't say that like ah! it's a. Don't look down on me because I'm a pool person. <laughs> look, beach is more beach is more effort for it's sure. A production. It's a whole the thing. Sand and there's no shade. And you the need a day off. The, you yeah, need a day off yeah, from the yeah. beach, but it's so great. Though. Yeah, when you get like a nice beach setting and the, yeah. the smells and the scents and the wind and the you know. Yeah, the pool's the sound nice. That, yeah, pool's nice though. Pool's pool's easy. I, I mean, when bringing kids to a beach is a. Oh yeah, whole other fucking thing. Like, and kids are just as happy in a pool. Absolutely, they're they're yeah. almost happier where it's like you can jump in and you know all that shit. Um, I do. You, will you go out? Like, do you party anymore? No. no. Yeah. No. I was anymore. listening. To, for, yeah. <laughs> like I ever. never was. Yeah. Not really. No. Yeah. You really are so much like my sister. It's very. Am fun. I? You guys really would be like best friends. Um, I'm just. Yeah. I'm just. I've been doing this for. My entire life, twenty like, yeah, I, like your entire like adulthood, where you've basically found yourself, right? Yeah, I had like, like two jobs in college, and I commuted to school, mm -hmm. and I did stand up at night. Like I don't, I never had any time. But do you feel like you missed out on that now? Or are you like, I wish sometimes, I partied and you know was wild and all that? Or is it like? Yeah, sometimes yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I only because I feel weird, and I want to be able to relate to people a little bit more. So I think that's all it is. It's not even so much like. The Man, memories. I wish that. I'd done that. I yeah. wish I was that person. It's just like, no, I'm no, I know I'm not that person. That's how I feel about religion. I'm like, wish I was that, because right, it would make it nah. easier to talk to me yeah, in yeah. my family. Right. But yeah, I feel that way more so with like So like all, all my friends have caught up to me. All my friends Yeah. You're like, like welcome. We <laughs> yeah, they're like, we don't party anymore. And I'm like, they're like, I just don't really want to anymore. I'm just tired. And yeah. I'm like, I've been tired my whole life. <laughs> Like I just and so now I think there's a little bit part of me that's like oh no now I can't now right, it's not it's even late. an option yeah 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 because yeah. like who would go with me right you right. know and now I mean you could certainly now you know I know the closest I get some... to partying is like I'll do mushrooms with like one or two friends uh, that's not bad it's great I mean it's funny how much mushrooms has become a, like. You know, 10 years ago, if you were like, oh, I don't really party, I just do mushrooms, people would be like, whoa, what? You know? <laughs> mushrooms but now feel like it's work. Like, it's, like, yeah. it's like five hours of emotional yeah. work. Uh -huh. Like, you're trying to get, I mean, I I did them very intentionally where I'm like, I would like to realize some shit today. <laughs> like, I never go into mushrooms like, whatever happens, happens, right. man. I'm like, I would like some epiphanies. I need to unlock. Please. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like to unlock some of these the, dark uh, the boxes. the paradox dose, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I heard... Um, Bert Kreischer was saying that like you went out with him one time because I think you were opening for yeah. him on the road and that you were kind of like 
you were just there and like doing it because he wanted you to be there. And I, I can't think of any social life examples that are more polar opposite. I mean, we went to like a cigar bar with some Russian guys. Oh God. Like He didn't even try to like ease you into like, oh, let's I, go get like some wine. At a, like, oh yeah, it was, it was just not, like, I mean it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was not like, let's get a drink at this bar yeah. and you can get club soda. It was like, <laughs> we're going to a cigar bar with these Russian men who I don't even know if they were at the show. Like <laughs> it was very, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm. I, I was exactly what he said. I was there. Yeah, yeah. And like, did I check this box off, Bert? Can I, I leave know, now? I'm so, I. But that's. I. I don't think that's like you know. Why would you? Yeah, I why mean, why would you like that? You my know? buddy Dustin opens for me and like headlines his own stuff and whatnot, and so I'm lucky that I'm successful enough that he'll still go on the road with me. But like you know, he's been married since he was 19. He's like 35. Oh, wow. He's got three kids. He's technically still Christian, but he's like a real cool Christian. And like he and I have known each other for like 10 years now. And one of my best friends and like, you know, Dustin will like go out and get a drink with someone and yeah. whatever he and his wife drink and whatever. But like he and I mainly have the same schedule on the road where yeah. we like we want to wake up. We want to get coffee. We want to take a walk. We want to get breakfast. We want to find like a thrift store. Like, mm -hmm. that's that's who I want on the road with me. Sure. That would not be fun for like someone else. But like Dustin and I are like, we want to hang out all that, day doing that's ideal nice, cute downtown walk arounds, and then yeah. do the shows, and then go back to the hotel rooms and Facetime our partners. That's what we want to do. So so sounds delightful, doesn't it? Right. right? I'm a thousand. <laughs> uh, I wish I, w I wish I was I wish I was somebody who wanted to like. I don't even I don't even know I don't even know what people do. Like I'm like yeah. you'd have to go out with people from the show. I well that's where you know someone like Bert is like this, he'll do that. This I think. crazy social fucking yeah. uh, like one of a kind. You know it's incredible because I, I, I think that most comics are like I'm sure that, yeah people party and they're social but like. A lot of people don't want to hang out with the people afterwards. And they don't want to get fucked up, and they can't get fucked up because they got to get on a plane and they got to do the show tomorrow. And the same thing here, where people are like, "Oh man, I'd be great at bars too. I, I like, I drink and I fuck girls." Right. And it's like, if you look around here, we're actually like internet nerds who are like yeah. worried about our followers and our our retention rate on YouTube and yeah. like, and so we just I dress like, a little better than you. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's like the people on the outside think that, oh yeah, you you can party and do this, live this life. And it's like, but the people on the inside are like, not really. Because if you do all that, unless you're a freak like Bird who can just, I mean, he's I an mean, animal. He's, he's not a human. Yeah, he's an and alien. who knows? I mean, I think maybe now he's, I have no idea what he does on the road after shows now. I think yeah, it's he's all just, I think he's very good at like, I think he likes life. People. Yeah, yeah he life, likes people, people, he likes life. life, he likes experiences. What like weirdo. Yeah, I'm kind of like being alive is really painful. Yeah, like, <laughs> enough of this shit. This is know. hard. <laughs> do you, do you think you'll um, I don't know, like just do it till you don't want to do it anymore? Like, is there a retirement? It's funny. It's not like something like you don't like sports. Like your body, your body stops eventually. You know, it's like I technically know. you can do this, and you started so early that it's like yeah. if you do it till you're fifty something, like some of these guys do, it's like. The yeah, travel's you really been, hard you on your been body, famous though. Famous for thirty, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's no joke. Yeah, the, it's really hard. Like I was talking to, I talked to Dustin and Sam about that all the time because obviously they're in their mid thirties, and you know they're like, yeah, you can already feel your body being like, Whew. no more. This is it's getting tougher if you have like back problems or. Yeah, Sam was telling me about his back. Yeah, his, his neck back's all yeah. messed up, and like right. I've got something going on, and. It's just because I've been doing this. I've been on the road since I was like 20, right. just sleeping on airport floors and shit. Like, I fly much more strategically and comfortably now. Yeah. And it's still really hard because it's so much, it's just so much time traveling. Like, there was shit with like, like I was, I had like pelvic floor dysfunction Ugh. that she's like, well, if you travel a lot, that can cause it and anxiety cause I'm like so everything I do <laughs> is it gonna is hurt, gonna yeah. hurt me it's like this lifestyle is conducive to like killing a human body <laughs> yeah it's really you, it's why, hard on you don't do it <laughs> don't, I, I, keep, I like, can't, not. can't not I don't but why not like because what am I gonna I it's do like <laughs> I don't know how to not like maybe you, I you, will maybe in like 10 years I'll be like I don't really want to do stand up or anymore. like can't I just think there's no rules anymore so it's yeah. like yeah a comic is supposed to like Travel to every fucking city and do 
fucking seven nights a week and all mm-hmm. this. Like, uh, I'm trying to, I said I'm trying to co- or coordinate with Whitney and like, Whitney's been a showrunner and like famous, famous, rich, rich. And she's still like, I'll be in, you know, uh, like Des Moines, Iowa on this date. It's like, unless you just love doing it, like, because you can do stuff on the internet now. You can do things from home. You can still make your money and grow your star while not having to do all that, no? Or at least try to. I do love being on the The road road, when it's not too much. Like, I really do enjoy being on the road with Dustin and, like, hanging out and working on jokes and, like, the shows are great. I like going to, I like going to good cities. Like mm-hmm. every once in a while, you go somewhere where you're like, yeah, I could have skipped this one. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. a lot of times, you know, you're like, I was in Milwaukee, and I'm like, I would have loved to have been in Milwaukee for a couple more days. Yeah. Like Milwaukee's cute. Milwaukee's underrated. Yeah, Milwaukee's super underrated. Yeah, and so I, I do really like the road a lot better now that I'm going to better places. But like over the summer, I was doing comedy clubs in like all the places that weren't major markets. Because I couldn't, couldn't because that, of this yeah. theater tour. So, like, there were a lot of those where you're like, where are we? Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. This, okay. And that is for money or for, uh, your like, to polish your skills? Or like, why? It's all of it. All of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. For, it's all of it. But, yeah, you do get to a point where you're kind of like, yeah, I mean, there, there's never going to be a point where you feel like, I've been on stage enough and I'm as good as I need to be mm-hmm. and this is it, I made it. Because you're ambitious and you're crazy. Yeah, and There's I'm There's a crazy. line of ambition and then you go over to like obsessive and, and uh, you know, imposter and all that kind of shit. But Yeah, but like I don't know anybody who's happy. Like I don't know anybody who's like, <sighs> I did crazy? it and I'm really happy with where I'm at. And like everyone I know that I have so much respect for seems to be dealing with the same stuff. And I don't want to spend my whole life being like, why didn't I get this? Mm-hmm. Or like, why am I not here? Or why aren't I better? It's like, how about... You just go do stand up because you like it. Like, I've really been thinking about that lately. Like, you know, I had that panic attack last night and I was like still kind of having it on stage. And mm-hmm. I was like, man, this used to be the thing that would take me out of panic. whatever I yeah. was panicking yeah. about. And now my life is so wrapped, my self worth is so wrapped up Ugh, in I this hate that job. I yeah. Know. Then I'm like, why don't you just go up and Try to enjoy the thing you love. love yeah, you like yes, forget you love it. Yep, yep. And so. that's and that is like the cruel twist where it's like, like I said, everything becomes a job, and yeah. your job becomes who you are, and it doesn't become the thing that like. But that's what you got to try to like reverse, you know? I know. But have you ever met and you're, somebody? You're in such a good spot to do it, though. Like you're the one. You are the one, Taylor. You you have to do it for all for the rest of us because you're young and successful and you're probably so fucking rich now so you could just be like I'm going to do what makes me happy and fuck the rest and lead the charge. No pressure. Yeah. No pressure. No pressure just like Bye. the fate of uh, the generation uh, our generation, you know, depends on you. Me going Nobody back did. to my hotel room after shows is like the the mo- the biggest example of that where I'm just like I don't give a fuck everyone's hanging out I'm going to bed. so you know what that's, that's that it. keep that energy that's it or that, like that even moment posting. you know yeah even you know posting what you a lot well no I was gonna say like because then it would become work <laughs> if, if you had like a internet series called like Taylor walks to her to her hotel. And you say, like, I'm going to order this food. I'm going to watch this show. I'm going to put on the robe. I'm going to take a bath, and I'm going to love it. And you'll be happy and that's vibrant, and people great, would love it. That's a great for that's a great idea for, like, story. Dustin and, then, and I. And then in six months, you'll fucking hate it. I'll you'll fucking think, hate it. I got to walk back to the hotel <laughs> and make the, you know. Well, Dustin and I do dessert Saturdays on the road. Sure. Which is very fun. Uh-huh. And, like, it is funny. We we. Forgot to film on this last weekend, and I like recorded like an explanation, and I did get, and I was like, I know nobody cares about this, and I got a lot of messages that were like, I do actually look yeah. forward to dessert Saturday. Yes. So thank you. Yo, that is what life's all about. Find your dessert Saturday, and try to make it Sunday through Monday. That's you know? all it is, and that's what I like to bring it all back around about kids on TikTok, <laughs> who are consistent and every day are like, here's me at Starbucks, and you're like. Great. I can count on this, I and I like it. I can count on this. Yeah, in know? a world where everything is yeah. falling apart, I can count on you going to Starbucks, and that makes me feel safer. <laughs> I love it. That's great stuff. Yeah. It'll, it'll all work out in the end. Don't worry. 
I gotta do a web series now. God damn it. <laughs> it would be good. It would be we'll good. Yeah. All right, the holiday season is approaching. All I want for Christmas this year is YouTube subscribers. We Please. Got, we gotta get to 100,000. I want Please, that 100,000 plaque. Subscribers. Uh, we've got a goal for, uh, for all you out there, for everybody. At 100,000 subscribers, Polly Feidelberg will join us on the show, maybe. Well, if not, we'll probably have to trick her into it, but at 100K, you will get Polly content. So, subscribe, click the bell uh, icon so you get notifications so that you're always watching. Leave a comment below, talk about it, post about it, spread word, tell your friends, tell your friends. 100,000 subscribers on KFC Radio for Polly Feidelberg. Let's make it happen.